All right, very well. So it looks like our graphics are gone. I'm gonna go ahead and call the special uh, section of council to order. Um, the clerk will take the official time. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, yeah, so it is 6.37 p.m. Mayor Poole. Present. Vice Mayor Rosemary Brown. Here. Eric Burkhalter. Present. Esther Boyd. Here. Yes. Yay. Okay, we got that. Pamela Fitzgerald. Yeah. Pamela yeah. Fitzgerald. Here. Robert Lawson. Here. Here. Keanu Trebu. Here. Very well. We have two items on the agenda for this special council meeting. The first item is to consider, discuss, and vote on ordinance number 29. Um, this is an ordinance revising the fee schedule for zoning and planning permits and inspections and declaring an emergency. Anybody have any questions about that ordinance? Hey, Brian, so you said the fee schedules, this is the new fees? Say it again, Pam. You said to attach, these are the new fees, right? Correct. Did you do you have that in your um attached, didn't you, Pam? Yes, but I was wondering okay. what was the is there like a 20% increase, decrease? What is it? There was a 1.5. I'm sorry, there was a 1.5% increase increase that was based on the consumer price index and advice from Hamilton County. For each category? Uh, yes. So nothing stayed flat. Everything was an increase. Right. Yes, everything went up 1.5%. <laughs> OK, thank you. Are there any other questions on that? All right, again, the ordinance number 29-2020, this is an ordinance revising the fee schedule for zoning and planning permits and inspections and declaring emergency. If there are no other questions, can I get a motion to suspend the rules? I'll make a motion to suspend the rules on ordinance number 29-2020. Second. I'll second it. Motion's been properly I'll second it. Motion's been properly moved and second. Roll call on the suspension, please. Can't hear you, Monica. Could be why. Rosemary Brown. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Esther Boyd. Yours. Let's just leave everything on mute. Right on mute our phones. Yes, sorry. Mute. Yes. I, I had that issue. Okay, so <laughs> Eric, Garrick Burkhalter. Aye. Pamela Fitzgerald. Aye. Robert Lawson. Aye. Keanu Tribune. Aye. All right. Thank you. I need a motion for passage of ordinance number 29-2020. I'll make a motion for passage of ordinance number 29, 2020. Second. Motion's been moved properly. Second. Roll call on the passage, please. Rosemary Brown. Aye. Garrett Breckhalter. Aye. Esther Boyd. Yes. Pamela Fitzgerald. Aye. Robert Lawson. Robert Lawson. Aye. Keep your phone on you. Did you get my eye? I did. Okay, sorry. Did we go through all of them, Monica? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, we just having some breakups tonight. Oh my goodness. No worries. All right, so that's the passage. I do need a motion for uh, declaring an emergency on ordinance number 29-2020. Make a motion declaring an emergency on ordinance number 29, 2020. A second. 
The motion's been moved properly. Second on the emergency. Roll call on, on the emergency. Candle Tribune. Aye. Robert Lawson. Aye. Emma Fitzgerald. Aye. Esther Boyd. Yes. Eric Burkhalter. Aye. Rosemary Brown. Aye. Very well, thanks. How's that? The next one we have is a resolution authorizing the municipal manager to enter into a contract with PSS Contractors LLC for the Woodlawn Municipal Pool Renovation Project. Are there any questions about this resolution? I got a quick question. Um, so the uh, the total we're talking about is around three hundred forty thousand dollars. That is correct. That is correct. Um, got a qu now, second question. Did they give us some type of proposal of when this will be completed since it's starting a little late? You know, as far as the season, you know, is it going to be done by May or do you have any information on the the possible estimated time of completion? I believe I sent you a schedule with the rendering. If I didn't, that's my, but I'm pretty sure I did. But I know in our contract with the uh, contractor, uh, we put in there that there's a penalty clause that has to be substantially completed by April the 15th of 2021. Otherwise, there's a $400 a day uh, charge. Uh, that's to be substantially completed. Uh, it's a pretty hefty fee. The contractor even noted that. So he's well aware of the completion date deadline. And we plan on having this pool to be ready to be filled and open by Memorial Day. Code okay. three. Yeah, I saw the pictures and everything, but I just don't recall seeing a estimated uh, date. But thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kiana? I just have a really quick question um, uh, regarding the, the total amount. Uh -huh. So on the bid form, on the first page, there's an amount for 40, 44, and then 251. Correct. Um, and then on the back, there is an amount, um, an alternate option, which is 256. So my question is, there's a $5,000 difference between the amount indicated on the front page, the pool painting, the concrete deck repair replacement, and then the alternate one splash pad, there's about a there's a five thousand dollar difference. So those numbers add up to three thirty five, but the uh, resolution says three forty. You're going with option two. We're going with option two. Okay. With the extra five thousand dollars, and the re reason being is option one included a lot of not a lot. There was three soft uh, features in the splash park. They were real soft material. And when I questioned uh, the contractor about that, about how long will they last? He goes, they might last you three to five years and you're gonna be replacing them because of the chlorine, because of the ultraviolet rays. Uh, it's too, it's one of the reasons why we went with the alternate two. The other reason is alternate one, a lot of these features were installed with PVC pipe and you had to thread them into a PVC pipe and the, those will tend to wear out, taking them off each year and putting them back on. You'll strip the threadings out on that PVC piping. Option two includes all metallic or metal features that when you screw them in, you're not gonna strip your, your threading. So for $5,000, it was worth going with the better quality work or uh, equipment. Makes sense, thank you very much. Thank you. I did, uh, any other questions? Having I, I have one quick, sorry, I got one quick okay. question. Because he sent those pictures of the splash park, but it said, um, I guess you're going to make some adjustments. So that's in, when you when that said adjustments, does that mean the, uh, the actual uh, um, splash, like I guess there was seven components or something he mentioned in there, Jerry, if I can it remember? Because the picture's going to be different, I think, of what they're going to do for us, right? Just a little bit different. If you, if you receive the latest email I sent out, I believe there was 10 features. Um, I can pull those out real quick. 
Ah. <clears throat> Come when you say real quick, it never happens that way. <laughs> it was the large tree feature with the bear hanging on it. Mm -hmm. Large, uh, tall uh, feature. There was one spinning, above ground spinning eyeball thing. Uh, there was a mushroom. Uh, I can pull the email up. I'd have to go to that and pull all those up. Mm, that's okay. Let me see if I can find his email. There was a, a lot of them. There, I believe there was like seven ground features that shoot out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, well, there might be six of them that did that, and then there was three that are large, that are above ground, maybe a foot and a half to three feet tall, and then the large tree item. That's what we propose to put in there versus these other little features. Okay. Out there, more durable. It gives uh, anywhere from a, a baby to a toddler to a little adolescent, different options for the park area. Right. Okay. All right. And the maintenance on that is, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, the maintenance going forward. So once we put out this money for the actual park, did the construction guy, have you guys talked about a regular maintenance plan for Woodlawn going forward? Just if you have those types of numbers, since we're spending this type of money, just curious of moving forward of how much that will cost the village. I haven't talked specifics to him regarding dollar amounts, but there are going to be, I mean, if you want to maintain this equipment for longevity to get a lot, some life out of it, we're going to have to make sure we properly maintain it. If we enter into this agreement tonight, that'll be the next thing I'll be asking this contractor is to what you recommend so that we, one, uh, maintain our manufacturer's warranty and two, to extend the life of these units. Yeah, that's going to be pretty important. So, yeah. Yes. But thank so, you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, have, if there are no other questions, I do need uh, a motion to suspend the rules uh, for resolution number 37 2020. Make a motion to suspend the rules for resolution number 37 2020. A second. Second it. Motion's been moved and properly second. Roll call on the suspension, please. Rosemary Brown? Aye. Garrett Burkhalter? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Thank you. Go ahead. I got your eye then, Mr. Lawson. Uh, Esther okay. Boyd? Yes. <laughs> Emma Fitzgerald? Aye. And Ms. Trey Buell. Mm. Very well. I need a motion. Uh, I need a motion on the passage of resolution number 37, 2020, please. Motion for passage of resolution number 37, 2020. Here's second. Motion been moved properly. Second. Roll call on the passage, please. Ms. Ms. Rosemary Brown? Aye. Mr. Burkhalter? Aye. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald? Aye. Mr. Lawson? Aye. Mr. Tra Ms. Trey Bill? Aye. Very well. All right. Um, that, that takes care of the agenda item number one. Is there any um, other business, including passing motions, um, that needs to come before the special counsel? Those are the only two agenda items we have. Say it again. Those were the only two agenda right. items we had for this meeting. Okay. All right. So with that being said, um, I am going to offer, I, I would like a motion uh, to adjourn the special council meeting. Make a motion to adjourn special council meeting for December the 9th. I second it. 
All eyes. Aye. Aye. There are no nay, no no's out there. Very well. All right. So that is the conclusion of that. Um, it looks like that we're giving back about five minutes, if I'm correct. Seven to be maybe exact. Um, and then we'll come back on at seven o'clock. Um, and hopefully Miss Rosemary won't keep us all night, team. I don't plan to. <laughs> so no one leave right. this this setting. We can set your video down and mute. Yes. So we're staying on this particular line, please. That is correct. Nobody you, move. Keeping Thank us you. on our toes. If anyone right. had a chance to look, I did email you all something regarding the personnel manual. I apologize. I tried to email it earlier, but my internet has been down this afternoon. So you should have it um, if you're able to pull it up. If not, I may be able to share my screen so we can follow along, but um, you should have it in your email inboxes. And Jason can have, yeah, he can't, Stephen can share the screen for you. Uh, well, when did you send it? Just a couple of minutes ago, right when my internet came back on and I joined the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't have it, just let me know. Hi there, Monica. I'm, I think I'm on, I'm just, I'm, I'm on audio only, I think. Can you hear me on the, yeah. I'll turn off my phone. 
Nah, Mr. Mr. D, you good? Just hang I out. Can, we haven't yeah, I can hear you. All right. Hey, okay. Now, do you need to change the? Do you need to uh, share a screen, or you, you just on? Yes, your I, I have a PowerPoint I'd like to share. So are you on your computer? Yes, at home. Okay. So uh, we can have Stephen do that. He has to make you. He has to share the screen for you. Oh, Mr. D. Yo. So I called uh, Play World today. Molly's going to call back. It was a mix up yesterday. Molly's going to call back. She said she's been here. She's seen the site. And you all did this. We're getting the park together, or the Harmony Park together. So she's going to come with uh, an updated. Uh, she said, I'm surprised it's not in the, in the, in the, <laughs> in the ground yet. She said she's going to come tomorrow. She's going to look at it, come with an updated price for it. Wow, that's pretty prompt. Yeah, she called me right back when I got the right person because, you know, the, these mid-states, they're in the regions. So I had called Brian and he didn't tell me it was the wrong region. So anyway, that 43077 uh, may change, it may not, but I got she's going to come with it tomorrow. So you all have, the, the committee will have more to go on. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll offer the COVID discount. That would be great, wouldn't it? I don't know what that would mean. And she but... said they could do everything. I told her to just give the total package with putting the ground, the installation of the concrete pad, or whatever. She said, fine. She said, I told her how much money that was that you all had, and she's working with it. I got you. Well, thank you. We got 15 people who are here. Is Mary Hill here? Does she remember? I don't know. I can call. Now, Mr. D, each of you don't have a presentation, correct? No. Oh, no, okay. I just thought she, she's the closest to the money. So if there was questions about the money or something, she'd, she'd be able to answer more than likely. And Mr. Country's not. He's got family business. He's away. Oh, okay. So we just had that meeting last week or so. That was like 65 thousand around that six five thousand dollar mark um yeah uh did i bring that with me in there hold on ah.
All right, it does appear to be seven o'clock um, and we got a couple lengthy things. So Ms. Brown, um, would you like to get moving on the meeting to, uh, at this time? Ms. Brown. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. It, it, it is a little after seven o'clock. I'm like to get started because uh, we got some presentations tonight and I don't uh, want to rush them. Um, right. So uh, I'm ready. go ahead and get started. All right. I'm going to call the committee of the whole meeting. Uh, Monica, give us a roll call. Call to order. It's 705, Ms. Brown and Mayor Poole. Present. Ms. Brown. Present. Mr. Burkhalter. Present. Ms. Boyd. Here. Ms. Fitzgerald. Present. Mr. Lawson. Present. Ms. Trebu. Here. Do the reading and the disposal of the previous committee of the whole meeting that was held on October the 14th, 2020. Give you a few minutes to go over that. Everyone's had an opportunity to read over those minutes. Are there any questions, any corrections, any comments? If not, I'd like a, a motion for approval of the minutes from the last committee of the whole meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the committee of the whole meeting that was held on October 14th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call or all ayes. All ayes. Aye. All ayes. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We have our meeting agenda. Uh, the first item on our agenda is Harmony Park update from Mr. Donahue. And I believe Mr. Donahue is on the line. Yes, I, I am. I'm with you, Rosemary. You're um, connecting. Yeah, good good evening, everybody. Um, and thanks for, for putting uh, Harmony Park uh, on your agenda here this evening. And while I'm thanking, I say thanks to all the, the donors and supporters and volunteers that have gotten it to where it is so far. Um, I have a, a, a PowerPoint, but before I do that, what I'd like to ask is, is Emily Suppinger still with us? Yes, she is. She is. Could, could Emily do like a couple minutes on, on CIC, just background? What is it? What's a CIC? It would be helpful, I think, for everyone to start there. Uh, well, the, the CIC is a, it's a community improvement corporation. It's, it's a separate entity from the village, but it's affiliated with the village. And it's created under a special provision of the Ohio Revised Code. Um, and it, the, the CIC once created, which it has to be created by the village, once created acts as an agency and an instrumentality of the village for purposes of economic development projects, civic engagement, and those types of matters. Um, typically what a CIC does is 
it gets direction and policy from village council and acts to fulfill those goals um, that are uh, some, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, assigned to it by village council. Um, it, it, is, it is separate for purposes of conducting meetings uh, and its, uh, its membership, um, but there are certain requirements under the Ohio Revised Code that a, you know, a certain number of its members also be elected officials um, and, and village residents. And so the CIC in Woodlawn was established um, probably 20 plus years ago. It became largely defunct for a, a while um, and then was uh, reestablished about five or six years ago with its first goal of working on the um, Woodlawn Meadows project. Uh, since then, it's, it's helped facilitate a couple of smaller development projects and the big uh, project it's been working on for the last couple of years has been the Harmony Park project, which originated with council and the former manager um, and uh, the CIC engaged in the process of trying to raise funds for that project. Um, so that's kind of a general overview. If there's any specific questions about the CIC, I'm happy to answer those. I, I'm good. Um, is, is my screen available to you folks yet? I'm not seeing, I see you just says owner. I don't see a picture or anything. Even can you make, can you share the screen as a co-host with uh, the one that says owner? Yeah, I, I made him a co-host. He should just be able to share his screen. Am I good? Go ahead, Mr. D, sharing that screen. All okay. right, well, good. Um, there's just a few slides we'll go Hold through. On. Hold on, Mike, you're not up yet. You need to turn your video on and you need to hit the little square at the bottom of your screen that says share screen. I have the share screen. You don't have your video on. Oh, let me see. Upper right hand corner, the three dots. Am I on now? You are. There you are. Yes. Okay. Are you seeing the, the slide that I'm hoping you're seeing? Uh, no. No. Now you got to share your screen on there, Mr. D. You sharing? Yeah, I'm seeing a box that says share, and it's not happening, I guess. It should light up green. Mm. No. Yeah, it should be. A Move your cursor screen. around, and at the bottom of the screen, you see participants share screen next to it. Should be in the green. Mm. I just lost the damn thing. Mm. Mr. Donahue. Yes, sir. Is your PowerPoint included as in, in copies in our packet? Yes. Well, why don't we just go through the packet? All right. Um. Well, if, if uh, I, I think everybody got it, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll go through it. I'm looking at it, and I'm hoping that you folks can too. But it'll you'll follow along. I don't think everything is in Ms. Donahue, so you have to yep. just talk it through. Talk it through. All right. Or um, you can email it to someone else and have them share it. Um, I I thought this did get out. Uh, let me talk through it. I don't I don't want to take a whole lot of your time. We'll we'll get it moving. Um, and I'll send the the I'll send it to you afterwards. You'll see it all. Um, Harmony Park, uh, the, our first slide just says music for and by the village of Woodlawn. Um, we're talking about large musical instruments, um, uh, contrabass with chimes, uh, swirls, yanceys, uh, lots of pictures of what they are. We got eight different big pagoda bell sets, lily pad drums, tune drums, um, all in all, I believe there's eight pieces. Um, and these are pieces that are for boys and girls and kids of all ages. This is uh, 
something that's interactive for everybody, young and old. Um, but just to share with you a timeline, uh, and I think Ms. Uppinger helped a little bit. In February of 17, we had initial discussions um, uh, at council in, at, during planning for a Harmony Park and uh, shared those ideas. The ideas were picked up initially from uh, in Pittsburgh at one of the uh, uh, city's meetings. Um, that was February 17. In May, we began actively fundraising and we met with fundraising consultants who assisted us um, in trying to pull together the materials that we were gonna use and we did use. In July of 17, based on recommendations that we got from consultants, we agreed to a goal to fund the park would be $105,000 to build the park. Uh, in March of the next year, 18, we were in the active part of discussion. Where would you put it? Where does it go? Um, that was followed in April of 18. Uh, and it was agreed that the site would be across from the police station and the municipal building. And that, that was approved by council. Um, again, in, in April, uh, we were fortunate. We, the project that we had put together was chosen by the Ohio Chamber of Commerce to highlight in their monthly or their spring issue. Um, in June, we, we saw the, the first work, honeysuckle and invasive species clearing uh, were taken out of that site, uh, cleaned up. That was done by uh, the Mill Creek Alliance, uh, who we've had a long time engagement with. Um, again, this is March uh, 2019, uh, timeline highlights. Uh, we had a proposal approved to hire DNK architects to do the landscape schematic designs and associated construction documents. In April 19, a letter went to Woodlawn residents and businesses inviting them to participate in a buy a brick campaign. And then in May of 19, we had an official groundbreaking event. It was really an effort to kind of restart the, our fundraising momentum. Um, in June of that year, 19, uh, we received a bid from John Tumlin and Sons for a substantially larger project than originally envisioned. Um, in August, uh, uh, August 9th, actually, we, we did a fundraising event at the Raw House uh, up here at the far end of uh, uh, Mayview Forest Drive. Um, established a GoFundMe page that was set up, and as a result of that, quickly raised $528. Uh, the brick campaign was ongoing. Um, we ended up selling uh, any number of bricks. And then on March 8th, uh, 2019, uh, there was a fundraiser luncheon for Village of Woodlawn employees and council members. Uh, to give you a sense of what the significant donors, uh, who they've been and how much, Duke Energy donated 15,000. The Community Development Block Grant Initiative, 25,000, uh, which was used to actually purchase the eight instruments that I believe are held over in uh, the maintenance department. Uh, that yeah, is correct. Uh, yeah, Tony, Tony Brown's thing. Other places that you'll know, the Pike Bar and Grill donated $500. Weisbacher family, the folks that own the uh, carpet land is who these people are, donated $5,000 in June of 18. Um, our good friends at Strauss Troy Attorneys and Emily Seppinger uh, donated $5,000 in June of 18. AutoZone from Springfield Pike donated $1,500. Woodlawn Dairy Queen, $1,500 in July of 18. The Princeton Music Boosters, $1,000 in July of 18. The Jake Sweeney Family, $1,500 in July of 18. Um, and I mentioned that, that grant that we used to, to purchase the, in, uh, the uh, instruments. Um, and then Ted Marty and Associates gave $250 December of 18th. There are a lot of other donations, but we've listed uh, some of the most significant ones. Uh, to give you a financial status of where Harmony Park is uh, currently, the balance in the Woodlawn uh, CIC checking account is 
$712.67. The value of the instruments uh, that we've gotten that are, are stored um, was $29,032, and that included shipping as well. Um, the total raised uh, so far is $93,744.67. Um, in June, I think I mentioned earlier, there was a bid that was received from John P. Tumlin and Sons to complete a park at the Harmony Park site. That would include site preparation from a swimming pool access drive, adjusting a manhole to grade, demolition work, adding 30 spaces, curb cuts, relocating street signs and lights, pouring pads for the instruments, and then installing the instrument instruments. The bid was for $172,000. Um, the CIC requested that the village reject the bid as it included substantially more work than in our original plan. Our original plan was basically to do a pocket park with some fun um, things to do there. Um, uh, and uh, we found out quickly that the village is not willing to fund that extra work. So it just made sense to turn that down. Um, the Woodlawn, you know, we've been raising funds now for over three years, and we either need to move forward or return the donations. And um, we met, I think, uh, I know uh, Mr. Lewis, Lewis uh, Kutcher, Mary Hill, I think Mayor Poole. There's a few of us who were talking maybe a week or two ago. Um, but we're proposing that uh, the CIC complete Harmony Park as it was originally envisioned. That uh, we arrange for an engineering proposal if that's necessary. And that we send out requests for construction bids. Um, and then depending on the engineering needs, we believe we can fund the original proposal with the money already raised to date. I know the Play World, who are, is the manufacturer of these, um, I believe, um, if I heard it right from Monica, they're going to send a representative tomorrow to take a look at what things are. They were surprised to hear that it wasn't in. Um, but a few options that we'd like you to consider um, for moving forward. Uh, we like the idea of a, a park complex in front of the municipal building, but have never planned any fundraising campaign that could possibly support that. Um, if the Village of Woodlawn would like to develop a master plan, you know, for a complex, including Harmony, with Harmony Park as a, a part or a gazebo, playgrounds, parking spaces, those other amenities. We're willing to share engineering costs up to $7,500, provided that the plan is developed to allow for stage construction so that it'd be like Harmony Park could go first and then the additional stuff would move on and over the course of some time, we'd have a, an even better looking uh, park down there. Um, that's basically it. Harmony Park work can begin as soon as practical, probably in the spring. Uh, that's where we're at. We want to make a move on this, get it done, and uh, that's it. I'll, I'll take any questions or comments or concerns. So, Miss uh, Mr. Donahue, um, uh, it looks like that Miss Fitzgerald have a question back there for you. Sure. So you have. Um a balance of $64,000 that that's left. Is that what I heard correctly? Uh, yes. Roughly about $64,000. I yeah. heard that you, um, you rejected a couple bids. We have already paid for the instruments. Yes. Correct. So you, you're waiting on another bid to how much do you need from from the village? That's where I'm a little confused. What's the dollar amount that you need from from the village to help you complete this? I think the CIC has enough money to do the installation as a pocket park, right where I said, across from the police station and the municipal building. I don't think there's any money necessary to do that. Hey, so, what, so, so I guess I'm confused at what you need from from this, this group, the council. We, we, need, we need to do, um, to get your approval, we need support from council. Um, that's probably a, an element that's really critical. We need somebody, uh, we've always had in the past, you know, I used to be on council. Uh, Mary Hill used to be on council. So we were always 
you know, championing and, and advocating uh, to move this forward. But we haven't had that of recent times. And I know uh, membership in the CIC is coming due. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor Poole, but I think in March you, you'll be appointing members. Is that correct? correct. Yep. Yeah. So I would just um, just like to say, just based on the information I have and what I've heard um, about this, um, just with the plans that we have for the the pool and the location of where uh, I guess you guys have been in planning for the last couple of years with this, I would have to say personally, I think this may be a great idea for the simple fact is we have all the new construction that's going to be happening on the pool right in front of it is this uh, instrumental park, which the times that we're in with COVID mentally and things like that, it sounds to me like it might be a great idea. I'm just putting it out there and that's my own opinion. Um, and with that already have been cleared out, it always looks like something's missing there. I almost think the timing and everything might be right for that to happen. Um, I'm not sure of the additional funds you might need, but if that's what you're saying for the instruments, since the instruments are parked down at uh, the public works, we've already made some sort of promises out of CIC because we've made had people um, donate to this cause. Um, and I'm sure they're waiting to see things happen. I would hope that um, just based on what I've heard and the information I have in my hand, that this might be a, a good idea just to finish it off. Now, that's what I have so far. And that's my opinion. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, just yeah, just a couple of things. So the, the instruments um, were paid for, donated through a grant. That's correct, Mr. Donahue? Yes. So that wasn't any village money that was utilized to pay for the instruments, which is a, a great thing. We, um, we and then the, other, yes. the other thing is, um, Mr. Donahue, could you explain a little bit further, um, since we unfortunately don't have the uh, PowerPoint in front of us, when you say pocket park, so that those of us um, on the call that hadn't been involved in those conversations can kind of understand what that means. Can you kind of paint a visual of what that space would look like um, based on the plans that, that CIC has and the $64,000 that can be utilized to put the park together? Yeah, sure. Uh, a pocket park is, is making use of what space you absolutely need in order to get an installation done. Um, it would be, um, the eight large instruments, um, and they would need to be mounted on concrete pads. Uh, they'll go on concrete pads. And that's generally the size of it. We're, we'll, uh, we've also sold uh, benches to different uh, people and entities um, where they'll be recognized of what they did. I think I mentioned pavers. I didn't mention benches. Mm -hmm. So there's a few more components that will go in to kind of like ice that pocket park, that small pocket pocket to think of it in terms of uh, the pocket park that starts the if you will a revitalization of the park area down there and I love the idea um, about the uh, with the bike uh, with the uh, pool going through all the updates and everything it, uh, it to me it makes all the sense in the world I hadn't really known that that was going to be going on this spring but I'm glad to have learned it can I just chime in one thing, just so council understands kind of what the ask is here. The village owns the property that the CIC wants to put the park on. So the village has to approve uh, the park and, and what it looks like. And so th that's the point where we, are, where we are where the CIC wants to move forward with something smaller and it really will need the village's approval regarding what this ultimately looks like. The village initially had kind of, uh, I think, grander ideas about um, how that property could be utilized, um, but without sufficient funding, um, the CIC is looking at a scaled down version um, of what, what the village was kind of went out and had bid. Are there any more? Uh, I see the mayor has his hand up. I, I believe Ms. Boyd had hers up first, uh, Vice I'm Mayor. Sorry. Didn't see it, Ms. Boyd. You're muted. Well, I, 
I um, agree that we need to go forward with this. I haven't seen, I, I have the information and I didn't get to read over it, but I would like to, I'm going to read over it and look at the plans. I do think we should complete this in some type of way because we went out and well, CIC went out and they fundraised and I think it would be a shock to our citizens, even speaking about giving the money back if we don't complete this project. I think we'll get a black eye for that. So I think we should complete it. Uh, but I just want to ask you a question. With the instruments that are going to be there, do people just get to come up and and use them? Or how does that work? Uh, is you put money in or what do you, how, do you, how do you get to use these instruments? Yes, I'll make sure and send you the PowerPoint stuff that's got the pictures of them. A lot of them are, are it's percussive. Each instrument is tuned, and each of the tuned instruments mm -hmm. is tuned with the other grouping, so that you play them with mallets. The mallets are attached to the each of the instruments, and there's no charge for them. Um, there's a few things like this. There's a a couple of the instruments are down in Washington Park, down on the Race Street side. There's two of them down there. This will be a. a a more significant grouping. Um, but yeah, it, this is a, a park edition for children of all ages, for me and for you, Ms. Boyd. Ms. Boyd, look at your packet. You'll see a live picture. Right, okay. Your life size. All right. Okay, and let me, so Washington Park has something like this. I was gonna ask you, were there any others in the city I would like to visit? Downtown. Look at it. Yeah, the only ones I know for sure, there's two pieces in Washington Park okay. on the Ray Street side. Okay. There's one on Correct. the west side that's yeah. like buckets. I have a picture of that. It's, this art park would be so much better because mm -hmm. it offers more with better instruments, more instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one on the west side that a man made, then you have one downtown that's only a piano that you can step on. There's not a variety. That's all you get. So okay. what happens like at night? Is, I mean, can you just walk up at any time and it's make the, you know it's chiming or whatever? I was just curious. I, I can I can look this up on Google because I, I just like yeah, to see Yes, you can. Sure. Yeah, sure you can. It'd be like using a swing in a park. You could use it at most any time. Okay. Okay, Mayor. I'm sorry, you finished, Ms. Boyd? Yes, I am. Just tease that. Mayor and then Jerry. Um, real quick, I, I just want to share. Um, I just want to be very clear in, in my stance on this project. I have never been against it. I've always been for it. I think it has, in my, in my opinion, the more and more I think about it, I'm not for sure if the vision came together with the financial planning of this park. Um, and here we are, it just seems like that we're being held um, to move forward on a project that we're, we really haven't totally put the vision out there in the hall of the planning. A couple things that I'm concerned about, we, and, and I don't think I hear that, is parking over there, um, sidewalks. Um, are those part of this? this plan just for that pocket piece, not for the masterpiece I'm, I'm referring to, just the pocket part. No. No sidewalks, no parking? N not at this point. That'll have to so, so be later on, yeah. Okay, so as a handicap, how, how, does, that, how does that help me? Mayor, and Mayor, Mr. Donahue, if I may. Uh, Mayor, uh, Hi, Mr. Brown. Mayor, uh, there was some discussion about putting in uh, an actual driveway. What about maybe 10 to 15 parking spots, uh, um, uh, a sidewalk, handicap uh, ramp, taxi pads, and all that good stuff? That came after the fact, after we got heavily involved with uh, what right. Mr. Donahue mentioned already. But okay. there was discussion around that. How do we uh, handle or just, uh, address the handicap and sidewalk and parking right. and so forth? And right. there was costs associated with that that we got from MEIBI. Uh, I don't, I didn't see it here in the packet, but uh, huh? there is a cost associated with it. This is one? that it? Okay, hold on, hold on for a moment. Hold on for a moment. We got three or four people talking. 
Can we let the mayor finish his point and then I'll go to uh, Jerry who had his hand up. I, I, I think that um, I put it out there and Mr. Brown kind of uh, helped that. So I appreciate that, Tony. I'm good. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Jerry, you're muted. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> I started working here in July of 2020. Was it 20? 19. 2019. Right when I started this, Harmony Park, the bids were rejected. Uh, the price came in at roughly $172,000, as I remember Mr. Donahue saying. Uh, and there was some heartache and headache and who was going to pay for it, and the bids were rejected. And it just kind of sat stale. Um, I'm not comfortable with Mr. Donahue was just sticking in a, a pocket park without any consideration to how are people going to get there with no public sidewalks. Uh, we're adding another park and there's no parking. The proposal that I heard was we're going to use the parking across the street at the police station. Uh, the plan that I also just I remember seeing did not ha um, even look at our zoning code uh, to meet the requirements in our zoning code, which if we're going to enforce our zoning code, we have to enforce it upon ourselves. Correct. Um, and th then when I look at the IBI's estimate for Harmony Park with a parking lot, they have a, a number of two hundred nineteen thousand nine hundred seventy four dollars. And I don't know how you are with the vision that I saw in the email, the original vision of saying we can do this, CIC can do this and raise the other money. We have a 63 or $64,000 balance. The old estimate came in at 172. And you said you, your estimate from your consultant was 102,000. Um, I don't know what it was included in that original vision, uh, vision from the $102,000 uh, outlay that the consultant recommended when the price came in at $172,000. And we see IBI has a $219,000 project. Here's my thing. When I saw this and looked, I went out, I did reach out to the architect uh, that you mentioned earlier, plus I reached out to another uh, engineering firm to come up with a Harmony Park master plan. Uh, it's not only to include the musical instruments, but to include other, other amenities, such as a parking lot, a shelter with a restroom, and then potentially a playground area. The reason for this is I'm trying to, for the village to be able to capture all three corners right there. We have the caboose on one corner, we have the uh, pavilion, the, the large gazebo across the street. And unfortunately, right there, all we have is one portal left. So I think if we're going to look at this, let's have a longer vision and a clearer vision of what we want to do. And I sent something out to the mayor in this tribute uh, today. Uh, mayor, I don't know if you want to share that, but, but my thought is we need to get together both as either the CIC and maybe the Recreation Commission and have a joint meeting to go over this. Uh, the price I received last year around, it was, I forward that again, it was December 19th of 2019 uh, from the consultant, but roughly of a price of $10,150 to do a master park plan. That is just basically the park plan itself. Doesn't include engineering drawings. We cannot go out to bid unless we have engineering drawings. And I think that's maybe what happened last time is the, the bids were rushed in. I'm not sure, but if the bids were rushed and they went out without engineering drawings, and then your price came in so much higher it was kind of a sticker shock. Um, but there's a whole thing. I think if we're gonna do this, and if we do something larger than just the musical instruments, we're going to need council buy-in. We're going to need council buy-in to say, hey, let's fund the money, the $10,000, and get the master plan completed, get some input from the public, get it completed, and then get the cost on the construction drawings 
and the cost of the entire park. That entire park can be phased in over time. I've also reached out to our consultants, the engineering company. I know Nature Works from our Department of Natural Resource. They have funding opportunities. And then I was looking at other grant opportunities from other state and national organizations and then private foundations. And they sent me a list of opportunities that we may be able to tie Harmony Park into to try to get grant money because of Glenwood Gardens just to the north of us and the Milk Creek Trail, the walk and bike trail that is right nearby us. We might be able to tap into resources and some funding opportunities um, with those other grant opportunities and foundations. Um, so in looking at this, I just don't want to stick instruments over there and say, okay, go use it. There's no sidewalks. And now, now let's consider looking at this and say, let's build around it. Uh, I'm looking at this whole area as a park complex with, like I said, the caboose, the gazebo, where he took down one structure, play structure down over at, by the gazebo because it was in such horrible shape. It was a liability to us. We were afraid somebody was going to get hurt. So one's already missing. Now, is it time to go ahead and add another one? I believe so, because what Mr. Saunders Sanders and uh, what Mr. Brown was telling me, it was used, and I've seen kids use it. Maybe it's time to add another feature like that. Uh, but again, this can all be phased in, but I think we really need to get down. And uh, what I was told was uh, money follows the vision, and, and what, what they said, it, let's make sure we have a clear vision. I think the master plan is important and then determining the engineering construction cost uh, drawings and as well as the construction to complete the park is just an important aspect before I think council can even say let's make this decision we're going to do it or not let's see what the total cost is that's going to cost this village a little money to get there but I think we need to make that commitment to ourselves and move forward so what I'm hearing is that we need to sit down and have a meeting with CIC I, along with the recreation. I believe that would be the two. I don't, Emily, we wouldn't be violating the Sunshine Law, would we? To have a couple people sit down? If it's both recreation, which and CIC, because we have a couple council members on CIC, correct? It would, it would be, it would be advertised as a joint session of both committees right okay so that would be fine would, would that be commission or committee committee i would think the, the council committee yes okay recreation committee okay okay, okay so um Ms. Boyd. Mm -hmm. yeah i see Ms. Boyd. no i'm talking about that's that's who that the committee is i was referring to okay uh -huh. go ahead miss boy you're mu muted do you have a question, Ms. Boyd? Thank you. I'm trying. I, I, I agree with Jerry. I wholeheartedly. We need to. I, I agree that we need to work at this, look at it, phase it in. I think that's very progressive, very visionary, and uh, yeah, I, I I agree totally with Jerry on that. I like that, and I think the village would like it too. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hill, I see you have your hand up. You're muted. There she go. Can you hear me now? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Um, one thing that since we have come to somewhat of a decision on what would be the proper thing to do and how we're going to do this, can we also from the village or either CIC send out letters to the, all those people that have donated and say, we are looking at the park and we're going to make some type of a decision. I mean, it doesn't have to be that terminology, but I would like something to go out to these people because I am getting calls as to where's, where's the park? Where's the money? What are we doing? So we need to do some type of communication to let people know that we're, we are thinking about it or we are gonna make a decision one way or another. 
or what our decision, what we're talking about doing. Uh, Mayor. I, I think that's a wonderful idea. And I think that it should come from CIC because CIC was the one who actually uh, went out and drew the money uh, in terms of campaigning for that money. It was not a village thing. So I think that it would be um, advantageous to that group if they would put that a letter out, form a letter um, to put out to those donors from CIC. Okay. And uh, Jerry, could you get in uh, contact with Mr. Donahue and uh, Ms. Boyd and we come up with a date sooner than later? I think your recreation meeting is what, the first Tuesday in January? Or is it the second Tuesday um, in January? Yes, but you, you have... might want to have a special. Yeah, I was thinking. A session other than that. Right. Well, my thought was, um, Vice Mayor, is because um, come January, we'll do our organization. That's um, correct. So those, those committees and chairs uh, may change. Uh, the chair yeah. of those committees may change. So mm -hmm. um, my plan is to have that organizational meeting um, early in the month like we did last year. Okay. So we can have that established because I don't want to have the month of January to lag along and we lose that whole 30 days. I really don't want to do that. Okay. I want to keep it going. I want to keep it going in 2021. However we do it, we want that date set for this yeah. meeting as soon as possible. And so we'll that make sure we can continue to work on this right. and get some progress done. And we'll make sure that we, um, once we set that, that we include uh, Mr. Donahue and Ms. Hill, so they understand when that, that meeting takes place so we all can come back together and talk about it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Just a couple of things just quick and, and, and I'll get out of your hair. Mr. Crutcher should be involved. He's, he's the head of it. As well. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. And I, I would just point out, you talked about January, you made me think, uh, Mayor, that CIC has, there'll be three council people and yourself which is a majority on CIC. So that should lend itself to moving things politically. And, and I'll repeat, like we said earlier, I, I think it's a great idea. Develop a master plan for the complex, you know, include Harmony Park. If it's a gazebo, another playground, parking spaces, well, amenities, um, accessibility. Uh, we made the offer to share engineering cost up to 7,500 with the provision that says the plan that's developed has to allow for stage construction and that the Harmony Park work can begin as soon as practical because of that push. We're hearing uh, Mr. Crutcher told, Crutcher told me uh, he had heard from the Princeton uh, Music Boosters saying, what the heck, you know, if you're not going to use it, you're going to lose it. You got to give it back. So um, let's keep all that in mind. And, and uh, I think we got the germ of an idea to see if we can't put something together that'll make a lot of sense down there. Gary. Uh, yeah, I just remembering you're going to be gone until the mid of January, correct? Well, yeah, two things. And anything from January 12th or later is great. But okay. just to uh, add to what Mr. Donahue said, I don't disagree with him. In, in my mind, we phase this project. And, and I will say it is my hopes or our hopes, the village hopes, that the instruments are the first in the first phase. Oh, absolutely. I'm going, to, I'm going to preface that with this. If we get a bunch of grant money to do another aspect and we have a deadline when it can be, it has to be spent, that right. will come first. You have to be open-minded about that as well. All of those particulars will have to be taken into consideration. Yes. Uh, I think, Ms. Hill, do I see your hand? Yes. Um, Jerry, I would like to... Uh, probably draft that letter and run it uh, by you so that you can have some input into what it says and how we want to present it to the citizens here in Woodlawn that did uh, donate money. Um, Ms. Hill, if that letter is going to be drafted um, anytime after Monday, if you could send me a copy of that, Jerry will be out. And if you could okay. send me a copy, I'll be more than happy to look over it and okay. add, it and add if I need to, to make sure okay. that we have everything in that letter. But that okay. sounds great. Okay. Okay, thanks. Is there anything else on this matter? 
If not, thank you, Mr. Donahue. Ms. Yeah, Pia, th thanks for your time. Today. I look forward to hearing about the next meeting. Thanks. All thank right. You. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye. You, you too. too. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas to everyone. You as well. You as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the review of the revised village personnel policy. And you guys, we're going to spend, <clears throat> excuse me, an hour on this. And whether we get through it or not, when that hour is up, Monica, keep time for us, please. When that hour is up, that's where we will stop. And then we will reconvene on this issue of the personnel policy uh, in January. With that being said, um, I'm going to turn it over to Emily. Thank you. Walk us through this. I'm going to try to walk you through it. I tried to organize uh, organize this as best I, I could um, so that it's easy to walk through and council can understand some of the changes that are being proposed uh, with these revisions. Um, just by way of background, because I think it is helpful, especially to some of the newer council members, the village adopted the personnel manual in 2002. Um, prior to that, all of the village's personnel policies were contained in its code of ordinances. And when it was adopted in 2002, now I wasn't, I wasn't at the village when that was happened, but when I came to the village and reviewed the manual, it was kind of obvious to me that the manual had been taken from another community um, and somewhat catered to fit the village's needs. Um, and I say that because there's provisions in there that clearly applied to a entity that had civil service and some other provisions in there that, that really weren't applicable to uh, a charter village. So in 2014, um, we worked to fix some of those changes um, and to make it more applicable to the village. And a year after that, the village hired um, an HR consultant who did some additional work on the personnel manual. Um, and I'll tell you, it still, it still had issues. There were still things that came up that weren't properly addressed in the manual. Um, about two years ago, the former manager hired a different company to um, start revisions to the manual. Um, they did some substantial changes in terms of reorganization um, and inserting additional policies, some of which were tour needed and some of which I don't think were. Um, at that point, um, I took over the revision task from them. Um, and I have worked with um, Jerry uh, primarily to get the revisions where they are now, which is what I sent to you a couple of weeks ago, um, I believe right before Thanksgiving. So one of the major issues with the personnel manual was how it was organized. So what you really wanna see when you're reading a personnel manual is it, it, it should make sense um, in terms of where you would find specific policies. Um, I like to use kind of a cradle to grave approach with the personnel manual, starting with Jerry's <laughs> laughing at my uh, comparison, um, which really takes it from the, the very first day of, of filling a position all the way through to the point where someone has separated from employment from the village in almost a chronological fashion. So the, the first thing you'll notice with the personnel manual is that it's been reorganized um, to try to mirror that, um, that organization. So I'm gonna try. Um, so I was gonna uh, share my screen, but I got a message that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Steve, I don't know if you're able to push that little arrow next to screen share that says, um, multiple participants can share. Uh, I just made you a co-host, so you should be good now. Okay. Uh, let me find. I, 
uh, here we go. Great. Can everyone see that? Yeah, just move it over. There. Okay. Over to. I'm looking at my screen to the right. Mm -hmm. That yeah. a larger monitor. Yeah. I have to read right when she first put it on there. Probably yeah. why your Isn't monitor there? maybe. It was yeah, doing good at first. He needed it centered. Um, I can't see it, yeah. but I think. If but, you got a larger monitor, a lot of times it happens. Well, I have three monitors. So I'm trying to figure out which one. Uh, when you now, first pulled it up, it was it was right. Here? Yep. You that got monitor. it? More. I can't. I, it's cut there off. There it is. There it is. Okay. Uh -oh. You got it, everyone? Yes. And when you do that. Small, though, but go ahead. Small. All right. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Y'all go get y'all readers now. All right. Yeah. When you do that, <laughs> go get those readers. Okay, can you, there. Can you see it now? But hold on. Yeah. When you do that, I can't see everyone. I'm only seeing myself, Monica, and Pam. Yes, that's right. When you screen share, you're not going to see everyone. Not going to see everybody. Well, my point is, if someone has a question, is there someone there that can see everyone to see that someone has a question? I think if someone has a question, just speak up. Okay. All right. All right. So I emailed this to all of you also. Um, unfortunately, I had some technology challenges this evening and Spectrum left my house at the same time the committee of the whole meeting was starting. So um, so I, I wasn't able to send this until, until later than I would have liked. So <clears throat> Here at the beginning, you'll see kind of what I was just talking about, that the organization has been changed to a more intuitive format. Um, and so here are the new sections of the code, or I'm sorry, sections of the manual, um, which is what I sent to you. It starts with an introduction, which basically has the goals and objectives um, for the manual, kind of the legalese on conflict of law and management rights. Um, department rules and regulations and an open door policy. None of that is new. That has all existed in the previous manual. It might have been cleaned up a little bit, but um, substance wise, it's the same. Um, the next section is uh, the village's workplace commitments. This is the village's EEO policy, harassment and discrimination policy, sexual harassment policy, reporting claims, ADA and workplace violence policy. These provisions were scattered all throughout the manual um, in the previous version of it. So they've all been put in the same section and they've been broken out a little bit. I will go through this in a little bit more detail when we talk specifically about specific sections, um, but I think we, we really cleaned this up a little bit. Um, the next section deals with that very first step in the employment process, filling vacancies and appointments, um, provisions on the employment of relatives, new hire reporting, probationary periods, um, outside employment, you know, Immigration uh, Reform and Control Act, personnel files, and performance evaluations. Um, the next section deals with employee classification, compensation, and administration. This is stuff like um, how employees are paid, their job descriptions, what the pay periods are, payroll deductions, overtime, um, those types of issues. Uh, the next section deals with when people are away from, uh, away from work because of holidays, vacation pay, sick leave, um, sick leave donation program, personal leave, um, payment of unused benefits, FMLA, those types of issues. Um, the next section is going to deal with the conduct. What, what are the expectations for your employees? Um, reporting to work, use of village property, use of vehicles, use of telephones, um, those types of issues. Um, there's a, a short section on safe and health, uh, safety and health. And then we get to employee discipline and appeals and employee separation. So that's the new organization of the manual. So let's talk specifically. So basically what I mean by this is that your existing policies, many were simply reorganized and put into different chapters so that they make sense. 
Now what I'm going to do is kind of review specifically those chapters and the changes that were made to the existing policies. So starting with section two, workplace commitments. Um, we did a lot of work on your EEO policies. Oh. Um, go ahead. Is there a question? Is it workplace commitment? Workplace violations, is that where you're at? I'm at workplace commitment. So this is section two of the manual. So any section, any... Um, okay. In section two. In section one, I have a question. Okay. My question is, and I'm just going to go by the page numbers that I have. Okay. On page eight, it says the policy applies to all regular employees. Part-time employees and seasonal employees do not have to abide by this? No, I, I, that includes all employees. So why would they put regular employees? What, what specific section are you looking at? Where it says... Oh, I see. Section C. Yeah. This policy applies to all regular employees. If it's all employees, why not just take the word regular out? You, you can. I mean, it's just me. Be, I, maybe I'm being nitpicking, but if somebody reads this and it says regular employees, well, I'm a part-time employee, so it doesn't apply to me. Well, it doesn't say full-time employee. I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't say full-time employees. And we categorize people by exempt, non-exempt, full-time, part-time, seasonal. I think regular is just capturing them all. This this was in the original version. It just wasn't amended. It can be changed. It doesn't, the word regular doesn't really mean much in that section. Before when I asked about this, who would get a copy of this policy, I was told that it would, a copy would be given to each department head for them to keep in their departments. No. Every employee is that going to change. Every employee must receive a copy of the personnel manual and right. sign off on it. Absolutely. And there's specific forms in the manual that they also have to sign off on, including mm -hmm. including the fraud reporting requirements. And um, they need to acknowledge that they've received the laws on um, Ohio's ethics laws. Uh, this is uh, Kiana. Really quickly on that point, um, the village currently uses PayCorps, correct? I believe that's correct. So there is functionality in PayCor where the personnel manual can be added as a task for each employee and they have to log into that and acknowledge that they received it. Yeah, in, in addition for audit purposes, and Tim can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're going to want to see signed paper copies of those those two specific documents that I referenced, the, the fraud reporting and the, um, <clears throat> and the and receipt of the ethics rules. Um, but but I might not be right about that. I would defer to Tim on what the auditor looks for. Uh, you're right. The, the uh, fraud reporting system is the one that they look for really hard. Um, but as, as long as I noticed when I went through it, those were both in the front section of the manual. Quite frankly, if you're going to sign one, you might as well just have them hand sign the other. That way you have a record of it. It's in their personnel policy. All right. Are we good to move to section two? When it says the village manager shall decide how policies are communicated to the village, and it gives several different options. Should that should we have a standard operating procedure? So when well, just say this village manager says it's going to be communicated this way. Somebody else comes in and says it's going to be communicated this way. Another manager comes in and says it's going to be communicated this way. You have employees who are thinking, well, this is how it's going to be communicated. I didn't get it this way. So it just seems like it lacks a lot of conf confusion to me if there's not a standard operating procedure, which we could have it someplace else, written someplace else. I'm not sure. But it just seems like rather than giving three, four, and five options. Um, I think it kind of depends on what, what it is that, that's being done. Um, obviously, um, if it is a substantive change to the manual, 
Um, I usually recommend that the all employees be given that in writing until a new version of the manual is distributed. Um, but there, I mean, there could be instances where, for example, let's say that the village is um, going to change from biweekly payrolls to twice a month payrolls on, on assigned days. You know, that might be something where the village manager has a village meeting uh, with employees to explain the change. Or that could be a situation where, you know, it, it's just handled differently um, because of the particular subject matter. Another example is uh, going over changes in insurance benefits. That's something you want to do in person, probably, because there's likely to be questions about it. Um, so I don't know that one method fits all scenarios. Scenarios. Um, so I think that's why it defers to the manager to kind of determine what's the best way to communicate um, uh, how the policies are communicated. Emily. Yeah. Just another example. If I say uh, we're going to change uniforms and appearance or whatever, say in a particular department, say public works. I don't have to address that with all employees. I'm going to go right to that department and do it. Okay. Okay, my mind was one track as far. I was just, I was thinking of the policy manual itself. Go ahead. Yeah. I see the policy manual as being something that gets provided to every new employee when they're onboarded right. and gets provided to employees when there are either sections or depending on what changes are made, you know, a new manual when, whenever something substantive is changed. Okay. Now, I know some places and I don't know if the village is going to switch to a more um, electronic type system for these things. Some places I know will simply keep the manual um, electronically and employees will be will receive an email and they'll be required to acknowledge that there's been a change or an update or something electronically so that all employees know that there a change has been made and it's it's the responsibility of the employee to um, make sure they're aware of that. Um, I don't know that we're moving to that system at some point in time we obviously don't want to keep printing copies of the personnel manual over and over again but as of right now I believe the policy is that everyone gets uh, hard, hard copies of the manual. Okay. I'm waiting on you. Okay. <laughs> Just I didn't want to I didn't want to rush anybody. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna cover section two. Um, this this section got um, a lot of attention. Um, our previous EEO policies um, conflated um, a lot of issues together. Um, so what I did was I, I broke them apart. Previously, we didn't have a separate sexual harassment policy. We simply had one harassment and discrimination policy that would cover, you know, all types of harassment and discrimination, which, which really, there is not a kind of one size fits all for that type of a, an issue. So we broke out the sexual harassment policy separately. Uh, we made a more um, straightforward and streamlined process for reporting claims, investigating claims, um, and those types of issues. And then we also moved um, the ADA section to this to this section, and we moved the workplace violence policy to this section, which was also revised as well. I see there's the, uh, on page 10, mm -hmm. uh, the bottom, there's a section that needs to be filled in yeah, I, I still need to do a couple cross references. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that we knew what sections were what, if anything got added or deleted to make sure we didn't miss any cross references. Okay. You also included the equal employment opportunity in this section too. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Our, our general EEO um, is in here as well. So if there aren't any questions on that, I'll move to section three. So we've added a couple of things. First is we added a section here on, um, and if I don't comment on something, it really means that there wasn't any changes from the original or anything substance wise changes from the original. Um, the first section we added here was the employment of relatives. Um, the village did not have a provision on this, even though it's an issue we have discussed multiple times. Um, the policy basically would would prohibit um, immediate family members from current employees um, to have employment within the same department um, or when a immediate family member would be the superior or subordinate position to a current employee. Um, that's a pretty common policy, especially with public employers. Um, it also um, confirms the Ohio ethics opinion that no minor child of any Woodlawn public official is eligible for employment with the village. Um, that's a violation of the Ohio ethics laws. Emily. Yeah. So that means um, even at the rec center when you have the, uh, you know, kids come and work for the village as, you know, high school students or 16 years of age, does, does that re, um, follow under that same type of rule? It does, it's an absolute prohibition. And the reason it is, and I can provide you with the ethics rule on this, but the reason it is, is that the uh, anything that a minor child owns, including their paycheck, technically belongs to the parent. And if you as a public official have a child who is working for the public entity, you have an unlawful interest in a public contract. So you're saying somebody like 16, like a minor, that's what you're yeah. saying, 16, Correct. 17. Okay. Yeah. I was just clarifying that for, you know, just, we know that there's, you know, we have kids or whatever that go to local schools here. And sometimes they like to work at the recreation center. So that's, that's what made me think of it just because of that. I wanted the clarification. Thank you. Um, Emily, on page 15, where it talks about employment of the of relatives in that bottom paragraph it said it gives them two weeks to make a decision as to if that happens mm -hmm. it gives them two weeks to yeah. make a decision right how was that determined two weeks <laughs> it, it, it was just a time period that we thought was reasonable under the circumstances mm. okay Okay. Okay. Um, the next section that was added was the new hire reporting section. Um, this was added uh, because it's it's a requirement um, under state law. Okay. Um, the next section that was added is outside employment. Actually, this wasn't added. It was it was amended. Um, so it's. It's permissible to, you know, especially for our part-time employees to hold employment someplace else as well. Um, but we do need to make sure that that employment doesn't conflict with um, their job duties and their job performance at the village. Um, previously, uh, under this section, uh, basically the village could strongly encourage someone to discontinue employment if it was creating a problem, but did, it didn't really have any teeth. Um, this would actually give the village, the village the ability to use it as a reason for termination um, if, if outside employment is conflicting with job duties at the village. Um, the next section um, Section 306, the Immigration Reform and Control Act, for whatever reason, the previous manual did not have a full, um, full policy in it. Um, it only had half of the policy in it, so the full policy was added, the requirements under federal law. Okay. 
and section 307 was revised, which deals with personnel files. Um, the previous version had some pretty specific details about personnel files, um, including some provisions where, for example, if a personnel file was being reviewed, um, you know, it had to be done under the supervision of the manager and it, it had to, the employee had a right to be there. When we have public records requests, um, if someone requests a public record of, a, of a, an employee, um, they won't necessarily be coming in to review that record. They could be just requesting copies of that record, uh, in which case we have an obligation to produce those documents. So this was, um, this section was amended in order to um, kind of clean up that language and make sure it was compliant with our obligations under the Public Records Act. Okay, Emily, on section 307, Mm -hmm. uh, section A, mm -hmm. that last line, an employee shall has, shall have. That's yeah. a have or either take yeah. the word shall out. I'll take, I'll change it to have. Okay. Or uh, actually, I'll take the shall out. Okay. He has the right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's move to section four. Um, this is classification, compensation, and administration. So here we added um, a, a section on job descriptions. There wasn't one in the previous manual. Um, so that's a new section. And section 404, pay periods. Um, Can go back to 402? Sure. No question. <laughs> Um, the village council with assistance from the village, from the manager, should it be the finance director, the manager and finance director? I'm sorry, where, where are you? We, we uh, under compensation, the village uh, council with assistance from the village manager, shouldn't the finance director be involved in that? I mean, typically the recommendation has always come from the manager. The managers worked with the finance director to determine uh, what's, what's in the village's budget, but that's typically come from the manager. Uh, I'll let Tim and Jerry speak to that issue. Okay. And also that, that sentence for well, reads will establish, shouldn't that be an A-N, not A-N-D? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know me. <laughs> no, it's good. You know, that there were a lot of yeah, there is. Uh, so it's good to go through and, and fix them. I, I didn't catch them all, especially in sections that didn't get revised. That's, yeah, that's okay. I, I, my, I was just wondering if it should be finance director and village manager because simply because the finance director needs to be involved in that. So however they want to do that, that's fine. Jerry, do you have any yeah, usually uh, your finance director is going to, your manager is going to approach what he is saying he wants to provide for a pay raise for all employees. He's going to make sure the finance director is comfortable with that request. Okay. The manager recommends it to council. Okay. Uh, I, I, would, I would agree with Jerry. I think just looking at, at kind of what we did this year, um, certainly we, we had meetings about um, salaries and all of that and you know, Jerry, Jerry presented things and I spoke on them as well. So I think, I think, it, you, you know, the village manager is going to involve the finance director in it. Um, I don't know that it has to be written in the policy manual. All right. Um, so section 404, um, pay periods. Um, this was originally titled compensation. Um, and this was amended a little bit just to make sure we were actually following uh, how the village was actually administering payroll. And I think it was just a couple minor tweaks. Um, the next section that was changed 
Um, and this really isn't a substantive change from what councils previously approved, but the overtime policy section, as, as some council members who've been on council for a while are aware, th this section has been revised a couple of times by council and has been approved by standalone ordinances. Um, so the revisions to this simply um, incorporate those changes that council had previously approved. Um, and it also contains some language just to make sure that the village is fully compliant with the Fair Labor, Labor Standards Act. Anybody else have any questions? Nobody else is saying anything. Can I? Yeah. Uh, I, I have a million and one questions. And what I'm going to do, because we're going to keep this down to an hour, I'm not going to ask any more of my questions. I'm just going to come down and sit down with Jerry. Can we put and, a wager out? Huh? Can I put a wager out on that? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I mean, because here's the point. Here, here's no the thing. Problem. I'm going to ask questions. Everybody knows that about me. I see some things in here that I really just have questions about, and I'm going to ask those questions, but I don't want to just um, take up all the time from anyone else that may have a question or to hold everybody over. Well, and I, the reason <laughs> I, I this period of time, this thing has been out there for the last two years. Um, and it's been that way because there's substantial changes that need to be made yeah. and corrections that need to be done. And at some point in time, we have to get it right. And, and, and I also, let me add, if we back up to 4.05, the payroll deduction, I think we might, might need to put a clause in it because Emily, we also allow deferred comp. Okay. And all, then I might want to ask if it's wise to add the grandfathering clause for other de deductions, but we're gonna stop all these other deductions because with having mainly it's, it's part-time firefighters that might not get enough hours in or do, and, and doing some AFLAC or other deductions and, they, and they're doing it by payroll, and they don't have enough hours to cover it. I don't, I don't want to chase that. Uh, we uh, should be doing that. Okay, so, so the one change, hey, Jerry, just to address that, the one thing that was changed in this section is that um, uh, the, the deductions um, are subject to the approval of the manager. Correct, but we have some deductions currently that I would like maybe to say we're grandfathering, but moving forward, we're not going to keep allowing all these life insurance companies and uh, AFLAC like companies come in and get employees attention and say, I want to do this by payroll deduction because it's been do done and I want to eliminate a lot of just unnecessary deductions. Plus it's costing us to write a check and keep the accounting record of it and everything else. All right. So Jerry, I've made a note that you and I should discuss this section. Okay. Perfect. After this meeting. Sure. Can, Jerry, can you let us know what deductions you're talking about that you're looking to, uh, at a, you know, at a later time, that you're looking to try to uh, do away with? Sure. We can get this out of the payroll system. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and Rosemary, I'm not trying to rush through this. I really, my, my goal was to because you guys didn't get a red line, my real, my real goal here was to make sure you knew which sections had been changed um, or had been moved around or that, so that when you go through reviewing the personnel manual, you know, on your own, um, those, those changes are highlighted for you. So that, that was kind of the goal with this little memo that I sent to you all. Um, and I'm happy to talk about any of these online or offline as well. So just let me know. Okay. Um, so the next section, we added a safe harbor provision, um, section 408. Um, this is basically just a, um, just a, a protection for the village. It applies to exempt employees. If, if, if the village accidentally 
uh, does something where it deducts money from a, an exempt employee. This protects the village from arguably some sort of uh, labor issue. So it, it, this is kind of standard language. You see them in most manuals. I don't know that the village has ever had an issue with this, um, but it's just there for the village's protection. Um, the next section is um, expense reimbursement. Um, for those of you who've been on council for a long time, you know that we've spent a lot of time um, on this section. Um, section, subsection A5 is the only change on this, I believe. And, and, and this is the section where, if you recall, we had the most conversation and it has to do with per diems for meals. So this language was suggested by Jerry, which just sets a standard per diem and it's on a reimbursement basis. Um, and it's, it specifies that you do need to submit an itemized receipt because the village is not allowed to pay for alcohol. And we need to document that if we have reimbursed someone or given someone money for a meal, even if it's on a per diem basis, that it was not used to purchase alcohol. Um, the next section that was amended is 4.11. Um, Can we do 409? I have a question on 409. Sure. It says where it uh, talks about if there's an injury. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't read, or maybe I skipped over it, or maybe it's someplace else. When is drug testing? Uh, when, when does it take place when there's an injury? When so someone's we, injured on the job, yeah. if they're in a car accident or whatever, I don't, I didn't see it talking of anything about in this section. It's not in this section. It's under our, our drug-free workplace policy. Um, that, that section's been expanded to discuss when someone will be tested, um, which would be reasonable suspicion testing which is what usually happens when there's been an accident. Post accident. Yep. Yeah, I'm just reading where it says uh, she'll be completed by the supervisor. Da, 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 da. Where did I read that? At? I was talking about as soon as possible, the person was supposed to turn in an investigation, I mean, a report or whatever. Maybe it was in another section, but that was just the question I had about the drug testing. Is it supposed to be done immediately? We do that right now as a matter of routine. Once yeah. Okay. So it's further down in the policy. It should be in the wor in the drug free workplace policy, and if it's not addressed specifically, we can we can make sure it's in there. Well, if it's after page 45, I haven't gotten to that. Oh, it's after page 45. So. <laughs> yes. Emily? Yeah. I, I need to do this. If, if we go back to the expense reimbursement under meals, mm -hmm. and it's that we're including tips as part of the reimbursement, is I know that wasn't something that was typical with the state. Is that typical within other municipalities? I didn't think tips were either, and I thought it went by the, what is the GSA or whatever. I didn't think tips were involved either. I mean, uh, reimbursable either. Um, I will double check that, Tim. I, this I, language, Jerry, I think you pulled this language for me. So I think it came maybe from Springdale. Okay. And it doesn't mean that it's not okay. It's just, I, it's unusual for me to see it. I'll check. Um, Somebody have a question? Okay. Let me just make a note. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, the next section, section 411, um, this is our insurance and our benefits. Um, 
under the previous version, I think this section was one sentence long that just said, we're, we provide, you know, uh, medical insurance and um, as approved by council or something like this. Uh, this kind of spells it out a little bit more specifically what the village's um, policy is on um, providing insurance benefits. In that bottom paragraph, <clears throat> excuse me, that third line up from the bottom. Yeah. Where it says, may at any time do any, do you want to put of the word of in there between any and the any do any of i gotcha all right all right section five um under section five the uh third and fourth paragraph were added. Um, so if a holiday falls on a Sunday, it'll be observed on Monday. If it falls on Saturday, it'll be observed on Friday. Um, that kind of language, which was already following the village's procedure. It just wasn't written anywhere. Um, and then also the, the following paragraph, in order to receive holiday pay, an employee must work his or her full scheduled work day on the day before or after the holiday unless they're absent from work for a previously authorized use of sick leave, vacation, or comp time. So this keeps people from trying to extend their holidays um, on an unscheduled basis. It seemed like, Emily, I remember that floating holiday when that came about. Mm -hmm. I was, it seemed like I remember that floating holiday came about with doing away with the employee's birthday. There should be some, I think there's probably legislation out there on that floating holiday, when that floating holiday was created. Uh, hold on, let me just look at what the... Because um, I thought it was created. I have the previous manual here, so let me... It, it may be in the previous manual, I don't know. But I thought for some reason or another, my thoughts are they created that floating holiday uh, in an effort to get away with the, uh, doing an employee's birthday. It's in the 2015 version, so I don't know. Um, there should be some legislation around regarding that floating holiday. I just remember that. But I could be wrong, but I thought that was the purpose of creating it. Do you know what the reason was to create that floating holiday? Well, I thought you had 10. Um, I thought that this, I thought the floating holiday was Columbus Day or President's Day. Um, mm. I, don't know. I don't know. We can look, Monica can look to see if there's any legislation amending that section. I'm just not, I don't recall that. Okay. The floating holiday was predetermined by the manager at the beginning of the year, and then they would put out a calendar what uh, holiday that was selected by the manager. Yeah, I know it's determined by the manager, and it really should be done at the end of the. It was should be done at the end of the year, so they know beginning January one as to when that day is. But I also have that recollection that that floating holiday was to take the place of the birth employee's birthday, but I could be wrong. We can look. Mm -hmm. um, section 502, <clears throat> uh, vacation pay. Um, this is largely the same. Um, the one area that we've worked on and we probably will continue to review is um, how the firefighters um, vacation is calculated. Um, we just need to make sure this is correct. The way it was previously written really didn't make a lot of sense. Um, so, so that item 
uh, is one we've been working on. And once we are, once Jerry has reviewed it with Ashley, um, we'll make sure it's correct. Monica, how are we doing on time? Kind of lost. Eight thirty-three. Have we extended our hour? No. Eight forty-nine. Okay. But ten more, fifteen more minutes. Okay. Um, the other thing we did um, here. Emily, we can get to page forty-five and stop. That's where. We're <laughs> reading. Uh, what? <laughs> <It's not> <laughs> page forty-five. <laughs> We'll stop at page 45, Rosemary. I don't think so. We're not going to get that far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the stick leave section, there were a couple of typographical errors. Um, and then we also wanted to clarify that um, the village does not accept sick leave accrual from other public agencies without council approval. The way this section was previously written, I believe that was the intent. Um, but the way it was written, uh, it didn't quite read that way. Um, so this would clarify that for all future em employees, they're not going to get credit for their sick leave that they acquired at another agency unless council specifically approves that. What I'm going to do, Emily, is I'm going to send you a list of all the other things that um, type typos that I got. Oh, perfect. That would be great, actually. I'm not going to bore everybody with it. <laughs> that that works for me. Okay. Emily? Yeah. The section about accepting sick, sick leave uh, with council <laughs> approval, um, is that is that in compliance with the high revised code? Yes, it is up to the, the, the village is not required to accept, accept sick, sick leave. We're not civil service. Okay. So it's up to the village to create their own policy on that. Perfect, thank you. Um, the next section was added. We added a sick leave donation program. Um, this is because we've had lots of instances in the past where we have had employees out for extended periods of time due to illness or surgery or, or some other issue where employees have wanted to donate their sick leave. Um, it's been permitted on a case by case basis, but really the village should have a policy on that. Um, this policy is um, modeled after the state of Ohio's uh, sick leave donation policy for its employees. Okay. Um, yes. Madam Vice Mayor, got a question. Got a question, okay. Madam Vice Mayor. Go ahead. Okay. All right. For Emily, uh, with regards to that, does does it spell out it has to be internal uh, transfer or can it come from various departments? It's just any employee. It doesn't have to be intra departmental. Okay. Thank so you. Po police could donate to someone in public works or something like that. Is that okay? I'm clear. Okay. All right, um, section 505 personal leave, um, it was amended to specify that um, personal leave has to be used in the year it was earned and it doesn't carry over. That was the only change. Um, the next section was added, payment of unused benefits. Um, and this actually took a provision from the vacation leave section. Under the vacation leave section, it previously provided that if an employee dies and has accrued but unused vacation leave, um, it can be paid out to their beneficiaries. Um, what this section does, it, it actually, it, it, it kind of combines all sort of earned but unused or uncompensated leave. So vacation leave, sick leave or longevity pay that the employee would have received um, and allows to be paid to the employee spouse or other designated beneficiary or estate. Um, basically, the employee will make an election regarding their life insurance policy and, and the same beneficiaries would be utilized for, these, for that payment.
Um, Section 507 is the Family Medical Leave Act. Um, for this section, I basically rewrote it um, just to make sure it was up to date. It was a bit outdated. Um, so I just kind of replaced it with a new up to date version that complies with federal law on FMLA leave. Section 508, um, a workplace lactation policy that was added. It is required by state law that we have one. So it basically provides that anyone who is breastfeeding will be provided with a safe and private place um, uh, so that they can uh, express milk during the work day and be provided with time to do that. Um, the next section, 509, uh, disability accommodation slash leave and separation. Um, this was previously titled disability separation. Uh, that provision didn't comply with the requirements of the ADA. Um, so this section replaces that section and is compliant with those requirements. Um, and the same with section 513, leave for and reinstatement after military leave. Again, it, what, this was amended in order to make sure it complied with Ohio law regarding military leave. Go back to 510, section 510, mm -hmm. uh, subsection A. Yep. Second paragraph, second sentence where it says fire department human resources. I don't know why it says that. Mm. It should be fire department employees. I think the um, the company that did the initial round of revisions mm -hmm. they were in cha they were changing things from employee manual type stuff to human resources manual and I changed it all back so I think they might have done a. Um, find and replace or something like that. I didn't catch that. Um, okay, the next section 5.14, jury duty and court appearances. Um, this was previously titled court slash jury duty. Um, this was revised in order to clarify the process for if an employee has to report to jury duty, uh, if an employee has to report to court for some other reason, whether it's um, work uh, related or um, for a personal matter, and it just specifies um, the policy on that. Where it says uh, the third bullet point under B, an employee must return to their job if uh, they're excused from jury duty doing their regular working hours. I mean, um, if they only have three hours left, are we expecting them to come back to work? We are. Or even if they only have four hours, if they have four hours left, do we, we expect are. them to come back to work considering the time that it may take to communicate community back and forth back? I mean, this would require if, if a lot of times what happens is you report in the morning and they don't need you and you're right. gone at 10 o'clock. So, that, uh, you know, yes, if you're, if you're not um, working a full day during jury duty, you're expected to be at work. Okay. I, just know with, I just know with the state, if, because I have had jury duty and, you know, you get out early and there's only like three hours left in your work day. They don't expect you to come back to work. I mean, we can put something in there that says, you know, unless, you know, uh, there are only so many hours left. I mean, that, that's up to council. Well, when I work for the state, they didn't expect me to come back to work. I think it will be. So, must, must, must I, was there for 30, I was there for 30 years. So, you know, it was a time frame. You know, if there was only so many hours left. And considering the fact that you may have to, uh, you may not have had lunch, and you, there's the community factor. Yep, I would. Just, I agree. 
I, I would just consider maybe putting a time factor in there if there's only maybe three hours or two hours left in the work day. I, that's just me. If they have to commute from downtown and then maybe if they have to get something to eat, I don't know. I don't know how pr productive that employee is going to be in the last two to three hours. Correct. When he shows up. Yeah. I would not I would not be opposed to putting in some type of time frame. You want to leave it up to management's approval, perhaps? I don't know. Jerry's looking pretty mean. <laughs> no, I can tell you the last time I served jury duty. Uh, you had to go online and look the day before to see if your, your group was called or not. Well, I've been on jury duty a couple of times, and a couple of times I have actually been called, went down, and was there for three, four, five hours. I've, I've had that so it does happen. But like I said, I wouldn't be opposed to putting if there's only two or three hours left, two hours left maybe in your work day. Well, here's here's the thing that I'm I'm thinking. Let's let's be realistic. If we say if the the employees excuse for the entire day, if they if they've been at jury duty for at least half their work day, how is the manager or anybody the department department head get to know when they were excused from jury duty? What time they were excused? Oh, you can get a note. At all. You can get a note from down there. I, I know you can, but what, how do I know that, well, wait a minute, you got released at, at 10 o'clock or you got released at two o'clock. They're just gonna release you, say you're released, you're excused for the day. Uh, find out if you have to report tomorrow. It's... What? <clears throat> I, Perhaps, Vice Mayor, they need to put something, or as you say, uh, because you can get something from the court um, and it, it's a timestamp in terms of when you were released, correct? That's when you go up there and get your little $5. <laughs> you can. <clears throat> I just think like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If you've only got two hours or something left in your work day. Right. You know, just like Chief said, how productive is that person going to be? Oh, I yeah. agree. I totally agree. So uh, there's any further conversation. Yeah. But I'm saying if you, if you go down and you get released like at 10 o'clock, I expect you to be back at work no later than noon. Yeah. That, that's a definite. Yeah. Rosemary, can I offer a suggestion? If I'm we're, sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. If, we're, if you're considering putting a time frame in there, I would say if the employee has exceeded half of his regular hourly day, he's excused, he or she's excused. Because I'm gonna be down there in ni nice clothes and then I have to come home, I gotta change to put my police uniform on or my public works uniform on. And then if I have two hours left and try to rush to work, like you said, they still have to eat lunch. I would say if they've worked at least half of their day, they're excused. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I don't want to sit here and try to chase when somebody was released from jury duty. I don't yeah. think anybody does. Yeah. Let's just say if, if, okay. worked in, if they've been at jury duty for at least half their work day, they're excused from, from the village employment for the day. Okay. And we'll be paid. Okay. Okay. All right, the next section, section 5.15 longevity compensation, this was added. Um, this has always been um, in the village's policies. It was previously in the code of ordinances um, where the employee provisions and employee policies were originally located. What happened is when we switched from having the employee rules in the code of ordinances to the personnel manual, um, the personnel manual didn't pick up this section and the provisions in the code of ordinances were all eliminated. So this is just making sure it's part of our policy. 
And it was for that dollar amount, $40 per year. Mm -hmm. And then they go back to five years. So they got, got at the fifth year, they get the $200. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have they been six getting- Six Huh? Don't they have to do the whole five years and it's a six year? Completion of five. Yeah, we were hoping council would take a look at that to help with recruitment and retention. Please. I'm sorry. It's 849 as well. Huh? It's 849 as well. Okay. So I guess we'll stop here. Well, do we want to finish we'll this? Back. Do we want to finish this section before we end? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so it. Are we in agreement that it would be the $40 and it, if, upon completion of the fifth year, you'll go back and you'll get that 200 What is it? For five years, that two hundred dollars. Rosemary, that's kind of pretty standard language. Okay. In the communities. Okay. The time, the time in years, and the the amount of a pay per year. Okay. Okay. All right. And after twenty years, that ceases, right? Max out at twenty. It maxes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, we've completed our hour. We got up to page. Oh, are we going to continue uh, complete that section 515? I think we did. So we're now on section six. So I think um, we're done. And I am trying to figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. And I'll send you an email with all of those. Okay. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. So with that being said, oh, here we go. Uh, all right. I guess it was a good thing I couldn't see everybody's face with their eyes rolling up in their heads and everything. <laughs> <laughs> with all my questions. Okay. The next item uh, on the agenda is IT service contact contract, our IT service contract. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll chime in here and if Tim won't say anything, that's great. Okay. But we currently have had our IT services with Donner Davis's firm. Mm -hmm. I believe our contract up is up uh, early next year. But what we would like to do is uh, non-perform the rest of the contract and enter into a new agreement. Uh, uh, Ashley has been diligently looking for different IT firms. Uh, the reason we want to move on is because uh, we, we really have had a lack of response and a lot of our, uh, our, our work orders or tickets that we put in to say, hey, we got a problem in this department or this computer's acting up. Uh, so it's been some non-responsive work. Uh, they're not responding in a, a su sufficient amount of time as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we, we purchased equipment through the company uh, following the contract, but it doesn't, sometimes it hasn't come in the original manufacturer box. We don't know if we're getting what we're paying for, uh, if it's refurbished, if it's uh, new, uh, or was it something he had sitting on a shelf? We just weren't sure. So we started asking for those things. Um, and it's just a sense of security. We found out since we started looking at other IT firms, uh, we found out we have uh, some existing security issues that we weren't aware of. And it's kind of frightening being a public entity that we don't have the security that we should be having. Uh, so we went out and we looked, uh, I shouldn't say we, Emma, or uh, Ashley did, uh, and we narrowed it down to two companies. Uh, one was Schoolhouse and the other is Next Step. Uh, I've sat in a couple of meetings with Ashley with these groups. Uh, I actually, I was familiar with Next Step because Springdale used Next Step when I was there. They were using them before I got there. They're still using them today. Uh, Springdale is so much larger. 
than our system we have here. But uh, I was very pleased with the service that they provided Springdale. So I told Ashley, here's their name, call them. I let her take the lead and run with it to let her tell me what she thought before I inter interjected anything. Uh, and she was the one that re recommended to me, I wanna go with Next Step. I think it's a better fit for us. I think we'll get uh, more out of them with, than we would with the other company we we're proposing. Plus it'll be what we're all considering is a step above of where we're at today. We have, I, I believe a lot of council has some frustrations with our, our IT system. Uh, we have so many departments, I mean, Anthony's there, Chief's there, uh, both Chiefs are there. If you would like to chime in, please do so. Uh, just, but be brief if you, if you want to. But we've just had so many issues that we feel it's time to move on. Uh, and this price that we received from Next Step is fairly compatible to the price we were paying. It might be a little more, but what we are going to do with this is we are in dire need of changing to our email service to Microsoft 360. We're currently on a different server uh, while, while paying for the Microsoft 360 licenses, uh, which is kind of crazy. But next step is proposing uh, to convert all that right at the end of the year. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and buy a new server that is going to be a combined server uh, instead of two servers large enough to meet our needs. Uh, and we're going to use the CARES Act funds to do that. And again, we would like to enter into the contract uh, the 1st of January of 2021 with Next Step. Uh, I raised the issue to them saying, hey, with the holidays, we can't have any downtime. And they assured us that it wouldn't happen, that if council approves the contract at the December meeting, they're going to start coming in and start working. Uh, we hope that when we do the conversion, from one vendor to the other, that we have a professional changeover and cooperation from the current vendor uh, with sharing our, our needs and passwords and everything else and uh, different stuff to the new vendor. Did you have a price? I'm sorry. The price was roughly $47,000 for the year. We have a monthly recurring charge. Uh, which is roughly a thousand dollars a month for the IT services. I'm sorry for the uh, email services, and that's based on 50 users. That number will fluctuate based on the number of email users we have, employees that we have that have our email. Uh, that number will will fluctuate. They do have a three thousand dollar one time fee to convert that. And then uh, they do have other reoccurring fees, but on in an annual basis, it's right around $47,000. There are other charges outside the scope of services that will be charged extra for. That is no different than what we are experiencing today. If we would buy a server or a new laptop or anything like that, that was always an additional fee. And then also having that, if it's outside the scope of work, uh, according to the contract, to get it up and running, there's a fee for that. With this new vendor, we're hoping, basically, we're looking at doing this over a period of time. It's having a whole new internet structure, backbone stru structure, uh, new system, and we'll be uh, better served, well protected, and I think everyone will be happy with the direction we're going in. Uh, I see your hand, Pam. Um, let me ask this question first. I remember something, and I don't know if we have an identity, what they call in the clouds, but at some point in time, I thought we were told that we need to have uh, someplace off-site that, that has our storage, that stores all of our um, information and everything. That's, a, that's for a backup, and that's part of, uh, it's actually part of the uh, state auditors recommended controls for computers as well. Right. Um, I think if I, and I, I'd, I'd have to double check it with Ashley, but if my memory serves me correctly, I, what has been told to us is that the current contractor is um, keeping a backup at, at his facility someplace. 
Um, that backup has never been tested. I don't know uh, what the real status of it is, but that, that is what we've been told. The new vendor would obviously go ahead and make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously being familiar, obviously having other municipalities under their uh, uh, blanket of customers, they're going to know what those uh, required policies are by the state of Ohio and make sure we're in compliance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I wanted to add real quick to what, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. I was, I was going to say, I just wanted to add real quick to what Jerry said. I, I, I did the math on what um, we're being charged currently by our vendor. And if you compare his current rate to this vendor's, to the new vendor's rate, we actually come out about $500 ahead. It, it's almost exactly the same price. In total, though, along with all the additional services um, that have been provided by the current vendor, we, we, we've paid that vendor over $51,000 this year. Um, I didn't dig deep and to see what what all the additional services were, but um, I know there are going to be a lot of things that'll be that'll be covered under the new the new group as well, which will be really nice. All right, Pam. Um, I think Tim just answered my question as far as the um, current rate and um, the new vendor, the comparison. So it's, he sounds he said that we were about the same. And it's, it sounds like the uh, CARES Act fund too will will help us with that. So he answered my question. Maybe I can get some, some mail, Vice Mayor. I haven't gotten it since September. <laughs> Maybe. Is there any other questions? Yes, T. T? Yes, I wanted to uh, mention to Jerry uh, to make sure that I don't know if he's just going to completely let them out without installing the camera that they purchased for the rec center. They're sitting down there in the closet uh, that was waiting to be installed. So they've already been paid. For, we paid for the camera. The village did. And I believe we've also paid for it to be installed. But we were waiting on permission from the National Guard to have that done. So there may be something, Jerry, you can ask back if they're not going to install that camera. Yes, we, might, we do not have a monthly meeting this month with the National Guard, uh, but if you can remind me uh, about that, uh, Tim and I can look into that. If it's if it's a minimal cost, uh, we may just forego it and then have the new company install it. I'm not going to try to fight that down the road if it's just a very minimal cost. Uh, but I want to make I just sure. I to bring it to your attention. Yes, thank you. Do we have any other comments? The IT contract. The only comment I would make is there are bills that come in from Cincinnati Computer Cooperative or company that we pay. Therefore, the computers we've purchased, they go on top of the money we give Optimum Decisions or Donner's company. Okay. So I'm assuming Jerry and uh, Tim will look into that or handle that however it needs to be handled. Is that correct? We will do that, yes. All right. Okay. Um, zoning text amendment. Uh, zoning text amendment. Um, I spoke to uh, Brian Snyder from Hamlin County. Uh, if those are on uh, planning commission, you may remember most recently we had a request uh, by an applicant to install a car wash on Springfield Pike. Uh, that was denied by planning commission. Uh, there's been some uh, word out there that the piece of property that the village is looking at acquiring the old barbecue location uh, and the vacant lot next door, someone was trying to acquire both of those pieces of property to put a gas station on those parcels. Um, in talking with Brian, he said, Jerry, he goes, there's really, since Planning Commission said it doesn't fit on Springfield Pike, there's really no location where it's zoned, which it basically is illegal. And I started doing a little research and uh, 
Ryan and I looked into this and we thought if we have to have service related establishments such as car washes, uh, gas stations, gas stations, stations. Uh, and uh, body shops, mechanic shops, probably the best location for that would be in our LA district along Glendale Milford Road. It's more of commercial industrial area and it's probably a better fit than our downtown business district. So we've, we've kind of discussed that. Uh, I, I pulled out several pages of the, our zoning code today and there's two things to go about this. Council at its meeting could recommend to planning commission to look at our zoning code and come up with a text amendment for the allowance of these service related uh, businesses. And when I say service related, I'm not talking about your, your Napa's and your auto zones and your uh, places like that, the retail stores that just sell stuff to you and you walk out of the store with it. I'm talking about the gas stations, the car washes, the body shops and the mechanic shops. Uh, that planning council can recommend uh, to planning commission uh, to consider a text amendment to our zoning code for the allowance of these auto related businesses. And then they could take it, review it through their public hearing and make a recommendation back to council. And then council would have to have their public hearing and then pass an ordinance. Or you can wait and tell planning commission to do it. And the same thing, they're gonna take it, they're gonna recommend the council. So it doesn't matter which way it flows, but if it comes from council, it can go from council to planning commission, planning commission can put it on their agenda for their January meeting. I already know they have a, uh, an item of business for the January meeting, which is uh, love landscaping down on Terrace Drive. Uh, so planning commission is going to have a meeting. So at our December council meeting, if council wants to recommend planning commission, consider a text amendment to our zoning code as it relates to the auto related services that I mentioned, then planning commission can take it and do their due diligence and report back to council. So do we need to do that by legislation or motion or, or what? I mean, we have in the past done that by a resolution. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it, Jerry's correct. It does not have to originate with council. It can originate in planning commission um, or it can originate by application. So um, what we can do is a, a, a quick resolution that just uh, directs the, the issue to planning commission. So that is, it is part of the official record. Okay. Excuse me. And that'll be ready for us for the December council meeting. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Is there anything else regarding that? Or does anyone have any questions or comments regarding this zone te uh, text amendment? Okay. The next item is the uh, Urban League Center for Social Social Justice. Ms. Tribute. Um, yes, I'll just keep it brief. This was just really uh, for your information. Uh, the Urban League of Greater Southwestern Ohio just recently launched a, a Center for Social Justice. Um, the executive director reached out to me um, and um, I know that she also reached out to Chief Tillman uh, wanting to schedule a meeting with us to talk through some of the initiatives that they wanted to work on. Um, they're focusing on um, local police jurisdictions, police departments outside of the city of Cincinnati. Um, so they have been conducting some um, research and assessments of police departments and wanted to reach out to um, local jurisdictions to see if there were ways uh, to partner together. They are really focused around police reform and police accountability. Um, when, when I spoke to her, she was very complimentary of our police department. Um, she talked specifically about some of the uh, police re monthly reports that she was able to find online. Um, talked about them being very thorough and sharing information and actually said she was going to use them as a model when she went out to talk to other police departments. So I just wanted to make um, you all aware that they did reach out. 
Um, the work that they want to do is more around just being proactive and serving as a model for other departments. Um, so just this was just an FYI to let you all know. There was a short presentation uh, that was included in your packet that gave a little bit more information about their focus areas um, and what they were looking to do. But I thought that it was a great opportunity to partner and um, a way for us to kind of showcase the great work that our police department does. I don't know if Chief Tillman, you wanted to add anything else based on your engagement with her. Uh, her name is Raquel Smith. We have not uh, come together yet, but I'm still on her calendar. We uh, welcome the opportunity to partner with her and let her see that we're already working collaboratively with the state of Ohio and we're already certified in a lot of those areas that they're uh, looking to have reform in. So I'm all in favor of her coming in and take a look at what we got. Just like you spoke on, she's already researched that we have uh, a good tracking system of um, who we encounter, how we encounter, and what our job is uh, detailed. So. We welcome it. So anytime she wants to come in or when we do hook up, we can uh, talk about what we discussed and what her findings is or how she feel or where she feels we may need to improve. We'll look at that as well. Okay, thank you very well. Thank you. Anybody have any comments, questions? Okay, next item on the agenda, uh, village employment vacancies and updates. Gary, do you wanna chime in on that? Sure. Uh, I have the mayor here and he walked in. His computer died, so he's jumping in. He's looking at mine as well here. So, uh, uh, employment vacancies. Uh, I will start off by telling you that the, the code enforcement officer that we recently hired had to take basically, I'm going to call it a, a leave of absence. Uh, he was a former PERS employee and he had to wait his time before he could return to work. So his goal is he's coming back in February. Uh, he had to have a, a two month separation from employment. So uh, this is the per honestly the perfect time of year for this to occur uh, when it's this cool out and there's not a whole lot of things uh, people can do uh, for when it comes to property maintenance. But uh, Mr. Williams plans on being back in February and, and he's ready to go. So that's one thing. The uh, recreation department, uh, recreation director uh, interviews took place uh, last evening. Uh, the committee of uh, Ms. Boyd, Ms. Uh, uh, Trebu and myself interviewed four candidates. We felt we had four strong candidates. Uh, we are narrowing that down to two candidates and I'm doing second interviews. Uh, we're hoping to have those interviews and it looks like it is going to be scheduled for this coming Friday. Uh, after that, uh, the interview committee uh, will have a recommendation to the mayor uh, for approval. And then uh, hopefully if he grants the approval, we'll offer the uh, candidate uh, a conditional uh, opportunity for employment based on passing a background check and an employment physical. Uh, so we're pleased with the candidates we did get and uh, we're moving forward with filling that position. Um, you have one other thing right down here on the police division update and I'll just go ahead and uh, talk about that. Uh, we're looking at hiring two new police officers. Uh, it's been somewhat of a task uh, there's not a whole lot of people out there, and I'll say qualified people out there, uh, one, that want to be a police officer, and two, that are a police officer that we're willing to accept. Uh, we've turned down a few uh, that didn't make it through our process, but we do have two candidates right now that we are going to interview Friday, uh, and that is Nicholas Arn. And I think that was in your packet. Uh, Mr. Arn uh, is a single male uh, graduate of Clinton Massey High School, uh, uh, Green County uh, Criminal Justice Training Academy. And he is currently, I believe, full-time with uh, Elmwood Place. My I correct with that, Chief? Okay. 
uh, and we're looking and interviewing him. So far, he's passed through all the aspects of the hiring process with the department. Uh, so we're going to do an interview and, and uh, see if we don't have a recommendation of hiring uh, Mr. Arn. The second one we have is Philip Means. And Philip is currently employed by a local uh, jurisdiction in Hamilton County as a police officer. Uh, Mr. Means is 35. He's married. Uh, he's graduate of Dayton Christian High School, Sinclair Community College, and uh, he is currently, like I said, currently employed by one of the local jurisdictions in Hamilton County as a police officer. Submitted his name, and so far, again, uh, like Mr. Arns, everything the police department has done regarding uh, their process, um, Mr. Means has passed through that, so we're going to interview him as well on Friday. Hopefully we're gonna again have two recommendations to move forward with hiring these applicants uh, and to get our department. Uh, what I will consider close to up to staff and this chief will tell me no way it's clear to uh, up to staff, but that's at least where we stand as we're moving forward with uh, these two applicants. Um, the police clerk, uh, we thought we had a candidate that we interviewed uh, last week that uh, was in very interested in the job. And then after the interview, uh, uh, decided not to take the employment opportunity. So we're back at the drawing board with that. Uh, we have a couple applicants uh, that we're pursuing uh, and we'll see what we get with that. And we're gonna have to do some interviews. I know I'm gonna be out of town here, but I know uh, Lieutenant Forth has been uh, trying to steep streamline that for me, and he's been a great help, uh, both with the police officers along with the chief and also the police clerk's position. So we're moving forward on that. Um, that's all I oh, have, unless the mayor is I'll ready. Have, um, the chief. chief, can you hear me over here? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Okay. Um, we used to get the report back from Don, uh, Dr. Dom in terms of the psychological on these officers. Do we not get that anymore? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. I will have to talk with you about that offline, Mayor. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, lastly, um, uh, Vice Mayor, I'm kind of over in the corner, so I, I don't know if you can see my hand. Um, but we've been talking about the um, the open position uh, here in the village manager's office. Um, and I've had the opportunity in the last week to sit down and just uh, pull that job description. Had a lot of voids to me in it. And I think that I, I went through it. Um, so I, I'm going to make sure that each council member gets a copy of that prior to our meeting on Tuesday. Mm -hmm to review before I put it out to the, um, before I put it out, out in the world. Okay. Council to look at it. And if they have any questions, please let me know. Which right. job description was that? I can't hear you, Pam. Village manager. Okay. The village manager's job description. Okay. I'm Correct. Just okay. You had your hands up before, uh, Pam, are you done? Uh, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. You just froze up. You're going to have to it's, start over. It's in regards to the code enforcer. You hear me now? Yes. Yeah. It's in regards to the code enforcer. Yeah. Um, with um, him not coming back until February. Um, what are our procedures to check information and make sure that they're able to work Um when they're hired so with the separation that you, you just said, um, was there a problem or that they had to sit out? Is that something that we can make sure we have checked next time if we ever have to, you know, to hire someone? What is the checks and balances there so that we don't make that um, mistake of not checking and knowing moving forward? Well, I can tell you we public service and retiring and coming back uh, I specifically asked Mr. Williams that if there was any problem with his pension system, uh, same one I'm in, of him uh, retiring and then 
taking employment up with another employer, which was us. And he told me, nope, everything's taken care of, everything's secured, everything's good. But I think uh, it was a little more than just that because I think he wanted to do something with his pension, with some of his money. So, and I don't think that should be up for public discuss discussion right now. But I did. No, no I, I didn't want that part to be um, discussed. I was just saying, when you look at it, the village is the one that needs a code enforcement. It has nothing to do with, I'm just saying policy and process, I, I, that the village needs a code enforcer. And I was just saying, is there anything, you know, so if we ever have to be in this position again, is there something we can do on our end to check, to make sure the checks and balances are there? Because so we expect the person to be, to come in, get hired and do a service and a job for the, for us. So that was my question. And I don't want to know anything personal. I was just saying, if we ever have to hire again, how can we make sure that, you know, because we, we still need somebody to come. We, we, I can answer yeah, it this way. I, I think I did answer your question by saying I did ask Mr. Williams if there was any problem with him when he left employment. Does he have to sit out or is he okay? And he said he's fine because he already left employment and went to the park district. But mm -hmm. I have you checked with the person? He said yes. I mean, when he tells me that, I have to believe you. Okay. That's the check and balances. I just know from working in the system, I threw that out to him. To make sure he checked. So uh, there's nothing on our end you're saying we have to no. put it in the other person's court. So now we are delayed for a couple months just because of it, which is fine, but I just wanted to yeah. make sure there wasn't something we could do on our end. I mean, I, I wanted to make sure he wasn't jeopardizing anything. So right. I posed the question. Uh, I know I posed the question to another village employee regarding the same thing, just to make sure they don't jeopardize anything with their retirement uh, when it comes to possible reemployment. So um, I think, I think so when we're talking to your question, Pam, there are certain things, I guess, that we would have to rely on that person to give us the information that we asked for. Um, so we do have, go ahead, Jerry, I'm sorry. That, that was me. I'm sorry. I, I guess I just want to add that we, we don't we, yeah we, we don't have we don't have access to anybody's OPERS accounts or information. There's not any way we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, to Jerry's point, that's just one of those things. If somebody's retired, all we can do is ask them, "Are you going to have any conflicts with OPERS?" And if they say no, we kind of take yeah. their word for it. Just mm -hmm. like anything else, sometimes um, you know people do the best they can. They get confused. It's it's kind of a, an unusual situation sometimes. Right. Okay. If I can just add, the onus really is on the applicant and I was just trying to help the applicant to make sure they weren't jeopardized in anything. And when they tell me, no, I'm good to go, that's the assumption we gotta go on. Okay, thank you. Yes, Esther. You're muted. There you go. I think what what Pam was saying, and and I'm a I'm in a same I was in the same situation like that, but I think with the PERS Oprah's system, maybe what she's saying, if we know that about PERS and they were coming from a PERS uh, job or if it's STRS like in teaching, and they're coming from that. Is there some way we could know that they have to sit out? Because it's a matter of, they say it's a matter of paperwork and transferring. That's why there's a 60 day period. So that's what I meant. Is there a way that we could know that? Okay. Uh, Kim or anybody else? All right. I see the mayor's hand. Uh, um, yeah, again, both of those questions were answered. Um, Tim just said that we have no way of getting into that system. We can't. So again, we do have to put the onus on the applicant and, and trust that they're giving us accurate information. So as long as we do diligence by asking that question, really that's all we can do um, I, that they'll share the truth. I understand that, but what I am saying to you as a, well, STRS employee, if we go to another STRS system, it is, I think, it's standard that we have to wait 60 days. 
I think that's a standard. That's what I was asking. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, let's, hold on. Let me... Hold on. Hold on. Okay. No worries. I mean, You're breaking up, Pam. Question. Let's try it again. No, I was just, I was just saying, can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? You're just breaking back up. Is that better? Yeah. Now it is. Well, no, now you're frozen. <laughs> okay. I was just saying. Oh my God. That's okay. That's okay. You can keep going. Are we all good? Let's keep going. We got questions answered. Okay. No other remarks. Uh, Jerry, public tradition. On the public works update, Hamilton County Stormwater Street Maintenance. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, you were breaking up a little there. Uh, but uh, yeah, Hamilton County Stormwater uh, uh, Water District, the program that the village decided uh, a few years back to take it upon themselves to manage the uh, SES program, Tony, Stormwater right. uh, Services program. And we're one of the few communities that are attempting to do this on our own. Uh, we did get a cost estimate from Hamilton County, which is roughly $44,000. And I don't think that's anything different from last year when we looked into this. Uh, we just don't have the personnel nor the expertise to be able to faithfully manage this program. Uh, it's put a lot of weight and responsibility on our, our people in public works and uh, Again, they don't have the expertise. Also, not only that, uh, it requires stormwater mapping updates, the GIS uh, systems, uh, which we did, I understand, a couple of years ago, get a proposal uh, from a, an engineering firm to do that update, which was very expensive. Uh, I think yeah. that's it. Tony, you recall what that fee was? Fourteen thousand or something? It was, uh, I believe, it was uh, what for a mapping or the program or so startup. The estimate council got from EHMU uh, it was like five thousand uh, dollars just to do the report itself. But startup was a different cost altogether. Uh, and each year after that, they wanted something like forty-five hundred dollars just to do the uh the annual report that's required to be submitted to ohio epa that's not uh, that that report is not done by uh ibi i believe I it, it is uh, however all uh, we we feed them the information uh that information consists of any uh illicit discharges any uh uh, disturbance of any construction sites and so forth, and structure site inspections. We feed them that information. They don't come out and do that. They just write the report out. Okay, but if we feed the them that, if we feed them that information, if there's a construction, say that again, construction. Construction site. Anytime you disturb the earth, you have to uh, rep uh, uh, log it. Okay. <clears throat> Such as so site, whenever so. we have construction being done, road works, et cetera, we need to log that and give that no, information. Not road work, a construction site such as Arnold Drive project. Okay, so that's when we would just have to log when that's being done. You, you have to do site inspections, uh, which consists of actual the um, the public works director, stone water <laughs> coordinator, and the uh, um, uh, the um, uh, what the role Mr. Leroy is in? What is it? Uh, code enforcing. Code enforcer. You have to do site visits. Uh, so many times each while the project is in and going on and so forth. And as you're doing that, you take notes, and at the end of the year, you put it in the report format, send it to Ohio EPA. That's part of the the report and so forth. But That's we don't do the report. We just get the information and. 
forward it on to our construction, right. our engineers, and they do the actual right. report. They don't come out so like for Arnold Drive. They did. They came up on Arnold Drive. And the reason why they came up on Arnold Drive because there were, there were some retention ponds. Uh, they actually put in storm lines, uh, waste lines, and so forth. So we didn't have that kind of expertise. So we had to rely on them. But if they came out, our engineers came out, mm -hmm. what was there for us to do to feed them information if they came out? That's just on that particular site. You also have to do annual uh, uh, dry, dry fall inspections, uh, um, outfall inspections. They don't do that. that. That falls on the village. Here's my, my question. And how is this being handled? I, I know when we uh, went with IBI, there were so many hours that we got free. Each 10 month. hours. 10 hours, yes, each month. When we have these construction sites that don't happen every day, why can't we have them come out to see these things and to check on these particular things that need to go into that report? It's going I to take more than two hours, Ms. Brown, to go out there to look at uh, outfalls, especially if, if you have an illicit discharge. So if we have an illicit discharge, what would that person do? Goes the out. Who? Okay. So a water coordinator or somebody from the MEIBI? Our person. What would our person do? And I see you guys' hands. Okay. What would we our go out, person we do? actually go out to that site, whatever the illicit discharge is. Uh, yeah. And make the uh, the owner of the business or a resident or whoever make them aware that they're having an illicit discharge. We have to call the fire department. Then you have to call Clean Harbors, Ohio EPA, and uh, Hamilton County Health Department. We all come together and go out and and do the uh, the uh, investigation and so forth, and write a report and assist that business or that resident to uh, help clean up the uh, the discharge. Yeah, when this came about and we went, we came from the uh, from Hamilton County. There was a wage increase given to the person that was going to take on these duties. Uh, they were also given the ability, or were supposed to have been able to go to get training for the things that needed to take place. I mean, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, there's only like five or six things that we may have to do. And as far as the uh, illicit discharges and things like that. Go ahead, Jerry, uh, Jerry and Brian. I'm, I'm deferring to the mayor. He had a, a, I have a couple questions about that. So when you keep referring to about um, these different projects and why don't we have such and such come out why the projects are going on isn't that a county thing that the county should be called to do that that's why we're paying them my other you know, mayor, is no. as an ms4 status we are responsible as the village to go out and do site inspections and when we were out there hamilton county they actually went out and did the site inspections yeah we're, we're, we're okay and so I, I just want to ask a real quick question because I know that Jerry wasn't here when we, uh, when the council moved. But uh, Tony, do you um, is Mr. Calhoun still in that role? Yes. Yeah. And so we we council increased a pay on him to assume those duties. Correct. He did. We did. The village. If did. we're moving, if we're looking at going that route, and we can have that discussion with the manager at a later time. My other concern is I'm just looking at my my copy um, from the Hamilton County, and I'm just looking at the residential service fees, an annual fee of about eight dollars a resident. That's correct. Why don't we look at possibly? putting it in that route. I mean, because $44,000 can be assumed like tomorrow, right? Say, say that say it one more time. I'm just looking at the bottom of the um, the report. I'm sure that everybody got in their, in their packet. 
Okay. Okay. Go ahead. And down at the bottom, it talks about the 2020-21 residential service fee. Right. Eight dollars and thirteen cent in yep. average annual cost. Yep. Perhaps the village needs to look at maybe uh, passing that on to the homeowner. We had that discussion, the manager and, and uh, the finance director and I. Okay. So maybe we could just have some further uh, conversation on that, Tony. Is that cool? Agree. I would like that further conversation yeah. because I'm going to tell you, I'm not in favor of going back. Okay. But my problem is, um, Vice Mayor, that we are not doing our job. We're not doing our job. And it's a strain on that department. So it makes sense. Why don't we go? Not only that, Mayor, I think the risk is too high for the village to take on such an uh, obligation. And, and furthermore, you know, if we're going to be an MS4, you're going to need the real staying in MS4 status. You're going to need the some true training, which the village denied, Terry, from doing that type of training, such as uh, purchasing the GIS uh, um, software and so forth. Because right now we are already out of compliance. We don't uh, have to update it Not only that, we can't go out and, and uh, inspect our own public works facility in the fire department. Those two facilities should be inspected annually. We ha don't have the capacity or the capabilities of doing the inspections ourselves. Okay. Or well, not, but the, but the main thing is we're out of compliance because our mapping is not up to par. Okay. Okay. That, that to me is the more uh, to to go that route back with them, making sure that all of that stuff is done correctly, because we're not doing it in house, right? Correct. So, well, I mean, I, I'm not understanding why we would be opposed to something like that. I would support the fact that go back to Hamilton County. When was he denied the ability to, to be trained or to get the? Uh, the second, the second year, the second year we became an MS4. He needed the, the type of training he needed. It was, it was, I won't say it was costly, but he, we were told no, he can't. I go. don't remember that coming to because it was some free because of the free training. Well, it ain't free. The annual uh, Stone Water uh, Conference every year. I see you they, they thought that was sufficient enough, and it wasn't. I don't remember any further training coming back, coming before council, where we denied him. However, we can go ahead and discuss this further at a later uh, time. At this point, Rosemary, I'm not for sure if we have any more time for discussion. I'm recommending and asking for a motion that we will this the full council for a vote. Tim? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to to kind of piggyback on on Jerry and Mayor here. Um, I did go ahead uh, when I set up the the 2021 budget. I did add this into the budget, um, and and I understand uh, where you're coming from, Rosemary. Where there's uh, certainly some uh, some disappointment in how you know perhaps somebody was supposed to have been handling this and and being trained. But I think back to Mayor's point. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to provide this service to our residents. And just this year, um, the village paid an $8,100 cleanup bill for a village for a for a, um, uh, a business that had stormwater issues. We were liable for that. It's not going to take very many of those to get to the the 44,000 that this is going to cost us. The other thing is, if that if those kind of problems persist. All of a sudden, you know, businesses, homeowners, whatever, they're they're going to move out. They're they're going to say, "This is you're not doing your job. We're we're going to go somewhere else. We don't have to worry about our, our property being damaged, or inventory being spoiled by bad water." Um, so the other thing, we, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go the ahead. other thing I did want to point out, uh, the mayor's point, where uh, these things can can be can be um, added as an assessment. We 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 can't do it. Uh, this year, but if we chose to to go with obviously because we're at the end of 2020, in 2021, if we wanted to, we do have the ability to make this a special assessment that does have to go on a ballot to vote for. 
Um, How many assessments are we going to add? We're asking for it. We talked about an assessment for uh, water uh, hydrants to keep them uh, repaired in re working conditions, which they should be. Uh, road levy. Yep. So forth and so on. It's just uh, how do how the eighty one thousand dollars you said that we had to pay because there was a, a, a illicit discharge. Eighty one hundred. Eighty one hundred. Eighty one hundred because of an illicit discharge. How was that found out about? How did, um, how how would Hamilton County, if they were doing it, how, what would they have done? How would they have found out about that discharge that we could not have found out about it? I mean, I, I have to defer to you on that one. I, I know a little bit of, of what happened, but I don't know how they would have how they would have prevented it. I believe that would be through their own service and investigations. But uh, so eighty one hundred dollars would have had to been paid, irregardless. Uh, Is that what you're saying? We should have, they should have found the problem through their investigations. How would, how did, how would they have known about it in a way that we could not have known about it? The Again, I, I have to defer to Tony to the process. The business would have to report it or someone else would just, somebody just walking by and notice something and report it to the business or to the village or to Hamilton County. But regardless, if Hamilton County had been, if we had been under Hamilton County at the time of that, Hamilton County would have to assume that responsibility and that cost. But unfortunately, we're, we had to eat it. The village of Woodlawn had to assume that responsibility because we are in MS4 status. And again, I, 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 I strongly believe we should not be trying to assume such a obligation where we don't have the manpower or the experience, mainly the experience. And you also got to take in consideration, we got the Westport going right down the center of our community. You don't want to assume that responsibility. That is a huge liability. Okay, then I guess maybe this is the question that comes offline when you begin to talk about someone's compensation. What happens now? Because I was compensated to do that job. I have some thoughts. Uh, you can't take money back from people, from an employee, so you say. So then it would just have to be, well, I don't even know that we can talk about it. I, I think that would be an executive session yeah. item. Yeah. I mean, I have some input on that, but I, like you said, I like to talk, discuss it offline. Okay, dear. I'm sorry. Jerry, you're muted. You're muted, Jerry. Two things I want to quickly add is one, Tim, I don't believe we have to have a levy. This goes right on the uh, property owner's tax bill. Wow. The tax bill, property right. tax bill. Uh, when, we, when we sign up with Hamilton County to do this, the stormwater district fee is added to each individual's property tax bill. Uh, this is what other communities do as well. I got the form in front of me here. And all we have to do is circle and then they'll, we have two choices. They build the community directly for all the fees or they build the tax, they build the property owner on their tax bill. And, and that's how it's uh, paid to the county. Uh, the second thing is, yeah, we do have an employee that was assigned to that task. Uh, if we reassign that employee because we eliminated basically a position, uh, that employee is going to be reassigned to another position, which is still with like all the other operators, but we can get into that later. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Comments? Yes, ma'am. So if yeah. it's reassessed, reassigned to the property owner, do we have any type of estimated cost? I think you said $8. $8.13. cents. $8 so eight dollars and thirteen cents would be assessed to the property owner. A year. A year. A year. Oh. Well, I have my thoughts on it. I think the mayor has his thoughts on it. 
So I guess we'll just have to go from there. Yes, Mayor. I see you. Again, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, I'm asking that a motion be uh, that we move this to full council for a vote. I second it. Do we need a motion to do that? Uh, yeah. Do we need a motion to do that? Yeah. I, I believe never would have to make the motion and, and yeah. second it. Pam hey, made the motion. She seconded it. We have a roll call. You didn't have. Pam second the motion. She didn't make the motion. We need a counter motion. motion to make the motion. That's, that's the motion. Okay. Here. Well, is someone going to make the motion? I make a motion that we take these uh, annual stormwater fees to special to uh, council for a vote. I'll second it. I have a roll call, please. You're breaking up, Monica. Right. 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 I have a question. Yes, Kiana. Yes, Kiana has a question. I'm just, just trying to understand process. So can someone um, share with me, this is something that we want to move to full council as legislation, correct? I don't, maybe, maybe I'm not remembering things right. I don't recall us having to make motions to do that. As an example, when we're in law committee, we might review some legislation and say we wanna move it to full council, but we don't ever make a motion to do that. So can somebody explain to me what the difference is with this and why we need to make a motion in this committee meeting to do that? In our Emily's not on the line anymore, so. I, uh, you know what? I have to say that I agree to that, Ms. Trebu. Okay. Um, I've always had an issue with something um, of three people on a committee moving, it, either stalling it or moving it on to full council to give full council the opportunity to vote. So I always struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, I agree with you. But I do. Uh, you know, with this one, I'd like to see this on the agenda for December uh, because of where we are in timing. It can be, um, you know, discussed again in law, but again, um, that is where it could also be held as well. Yeah, I understand that. I just was trying to understand process and make sure that what we're doing is, is number one, what we're actually required to do and what we should be doing. Because I just don't, I, I remember, you know, in law committee, we don't ever make motions to move things to the council floor. We do ask for um, agreement and consensus in a way. But if that's what we have to do, it's just what we have to do. I just want to understand it from my own personal knowledge. I get you. Because um, it hasn't been consistent in these different committee meetings, whether, you know, mm -hmm. when we just move forward, when we have to make a motion and vote on right. things. So I just wanted to get some clarification. I think you could that. do one or two things, probably in finance. We have finance on the 14th. So, uh, finance and law. Yeah, we have finance mm -hmm. and law on the 14th. We can do it in finance. Well, any more questions? Any other further questions? They could take it to law, just so that you can have the legislation. Emily can have the legislation drawn up for the council meeting, which would be. If, if I can tell you, Emily just texted me. She said she didn't get you. Uh, <laughs> Spectrum is back up the house on the next pull and her internet's back out again. So she just texted me. She apologized. But yeah, she can get that legislation together for the, the council meeting. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, is there any other questions or, or come on, comments? He's back. Is this right around? I beg your pardon. Emily just came back. You want to ask her a question? Emily is back. Emily is back. Sorry. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question came up about Hamilton County stormwater and uh, 
the mayor is wanting uh, legislation so that it would be available for our council meeting on the 15th. Okay. So we could make a motion uh, in finance or law on the 14th, or do you just I will um, prepare the legislation for you to review at law. Um, right. I'm not sure um, when I'll be able to join that meeting. I, I, because it was moved, I do have, actually I have two other meetings scheduled that night. So, but um, I might be able to join towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I will prepare, yeah. I'll prepare all the legislation and send you a memo with it um, in advance of that meeting to, to review. All right, thank you. Sure. Okay, the last item that we have is the fire hydrant maintenance update. I didn't hear you, Monica. I don't think Mr. Brown was done with his update. Mr. Brown, did you have anything else to add? No. Is street maintenance and fire hydrant maintenance update? Street maintenance fire hydrant update. Oh, street yeah, maintenance, yeah. we got a spreadsheet before you tonight. Uh, it's just you asked for an update or the cost of uh, each uh, road project from 2019 to 2020. Uh -huh. So that, that's what that spreadsheet is. Uh, disregard that uh, final cost, uh, the actual cost on the uh, Shady because we still have not uh, received the final cost for all the, uh, the incidentals up there, so. Uh, Paul, I spoke with uh, Proust Construction yesterday. He is working on getting that final draw. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully by Friday or sometime next week, uh, he'll submit it to MEIBI or to Tim. Okay. But the other projects, you, they're there right in front of you. Those are actual uh, costs and how we pay for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Questions? I'm sorry. Ms. Boyd had a question. Is it regarding the uh, street street maintenance? Yes. Okay. Okay. We talked about, and I don't know who brought it up in the last meeting. I think Tony brought it up about repaving. Um, I think Timberland Drive or something, so that it costs you less money in the future if you start handling the situation. I guess when the roads need to be done. Better, and as I, through, I, as I was going through Woodlawn the other day, and I saw how terrible some of the roads are in, and we're fixing them. And I applaud us and. And many people applaud us for that. They're really excited. But as um, I thought about what you had said, Mr. Brown, and I, I would recommend if that means anything, that we do start being proactive. And it is a lot uh, less expensive right now so that our roads don't get in that kind of shape again. So I just wanted to bring that up and say we might want to, Jerry might want to, uh, or you or something might want to take a look at that again so that we do, you know, do the maintenance when to prevent us from having such issues again. Because I was riding the other day and it was like amazing in an area I hadn't been in before. So I just wanted to. We up. just need to take an account that that is an administrative uh, role in terms of how they, um, you know, uh, rate the streets and, and the and how worse they are. But you're right, Ms. Boyd, there's some around here that are just about horrible. Um, so when you look at the example, you started off by saying Timberland. Timberland is almost like a new street compared to some of the streets in the village. Um, so again, I think that's an administrative thing where they just need to sit down and mm -hmm. talk about the priorities and how they need to be listed in terms of where we go next. Yeah, but in the future, it might be a good idea that we're thinking proactive like that. Right. So 10 years down, right. you know, that we don't follow. Just exactly. mentioning it. It's yep. Kind of like a math. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Is there anything else? There. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything else? Anyone else have any other comments? Yes, Mayor. I just wanted to say, oh, and uh, Chief, I see you too. Okay. okay. I go ahead, Mayor. No, go finish. Chief. Please finish. Chief. Please finish. Uh, 
I just would like for everyone to um, uh, keep the Obermeyer family in their thoughts and prayers as uh, Obermeyer passed over a week ago, our former chief. So we would like for you to keep him in, in your thoughts. I was I hated to hear that. Yeah. Obermeyer passed away. You didn't know. Thursday. Yeah. Wow. I sent the email. Wow. Yes. You spent so much time in this in this village, and I'm just now knowing that. That's kind of like a slap in the face, but I'll move on. Um, but there was an email sent out. I, I, I guess you didn't get it. Your tablet is messed up. Emails came out last. Yeah. Remember, I haven't gotten an email since the 24th of this, uh, September. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you could no. do that. Sure, Jerry, did you have any? Did you have anything else? I saw your hand, Jerry. Uh, yeah, are you ready? Are you down at New Business? Yeah. Yes. Are I you, guess so. Yes. Oh, okay. Real quickly, um, Monica sent out, or Jason from ICRC sent out, um, where they are doing something with communities and council members getting on and doing some type of greeting or something to our residents. Mm -hmm. He called me this afternoon prior to the meeting, um, and we were talking about kind of how this looks. So this is what I'm asking council to do. I am asking council, all of you, to do, you will take your own little message on your phone. And I will make sure that Monica is sending you kind of like the steps that he's gonna to send to us today or sometime tonight. And um, that is due back to them by 10 a.m. Friday morning. So if you want to put your Santa Claus hat on or whatever you want to do, put a greeting out there. Once those are sent over to them, they will edit that, kind of put some holiday music out there for us. But it gives us an opportunity to put our faces out one-on-one -on -one to the residents that are watching us and just put some cheer into their lives. So I really want, I didn't want to do it alone. I want the entire team to do it. So um, please commit to that. Um, and again, if you have any questions, give Monica a call first thing in the morning, but it is due no later than 10 a.m. on Friday morning. And I want all council to be involved with that if all possible. Also, why I got y'all on the phone, you're not off the hook that, that easy, Tim and the chief and Tony and Jerry. <laughs> I'd like to see um, not only council, but we're talking about directors and our village leadership team. i like to see that as well. So guess what? You guys have until 10 a.m. on Friday to record this and get it back. And so we can produce a little something um, in different communities. They're all doing something totally different. I heard some great ideas out there today. Um, Monica did send us a link the other day. If you click on that link, it'll show you, I believe, the city of Milford. But it was from Easter, but just giving you an idea of what we're trying to come together to do for the holiday. How does that sound? Send it to us. Interesting. Silence is golden. Send it to us. Interesting. <laughs> there. On him. Okay. Hi, one, Jerry. One, one comment. Yes. If anyone has Cleveland Brown or Pittsburgh Steeler garb on, you will not be seen. That is correct. I will not take uh, uh, Cleveland Browns or Cincinnati Bengals gear on. Oh, I'll take Cincinnati. No Steelers. Oh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Is something you need to say to me? <laughs> okay. I'd like to. Does anybody else have anything? You have your hand up, Chief? No. No, okay. I thank everybody for your patience and um, getting through this meeting. It was a long one. No, no fault of my own. Oh. Okay. No fault of my own. But I want to wish everyone a happy holidays. If you're out there, our audience looking at us, uh, thanks for standing, staying with us. We appreciate you. 
look forward to serving you to the very best of our ability. And if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion. Everyone stay healthy. Stay healthy. Can I get a motion to conclude the meeting? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rosemary. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Good night. Stay safe. All eyes, everyone.